Fall unfassbar spannend für uns Zuschauer gestaltet. Auch die Klassen waren hart umkämpft. Also die Cup 2, die Cup 3 ist... This is the Nürburgring and the Nordschleife. This is the final opportunity this weekend for the drivers and teams taking part in the Ravenol ADAC. 24 hours of the Nürburgring in about a month, just over a month's time to experience, and I use that word advisedly, to experience the potential conditions that they'll be facing come the big race uh, later in the year. The Cupra Formentor has pulled up at the front of the grid, ready to lay, uh, lead off the first group of 30 or so cars. And then it's... Uh, it's uh, stable mates will be bringing through groups two and three at three minute intervals. The weather is playing ball forecast 14 to 16 Celsius today, a little bit overcast, maybe uh, as we go into the second half of the race, but virtually no chance of any rain. Under 5% chance of rain is what the weather forecasters say. Welcome to our live world feed coverage, free around the world. Good to have your company also on RS1 via RadioLamont.com. So if you're traveling around, we don't want you looking at pictures if you're driving around. Maybe if you're a bit bandwidth uh, compromised as well you can just use the audio that's over on rs1 and we'll take you through till the end of the race peter snowden joins me john heindorf in the global broadcast center we've had the top qualifying this morning the only thing that i've noticed after that and i, I can't really give you very much uh, news uh, on uh, on other than what i'm about to say peter is that the uh, the stewards have reported the Schnitzel Arm Racing Mercedes number 11 for what's been called a technical infringement. And that is on the race control screen. But other than that, everybody seems to have got through the technical checks and we're ready to go for another four hours in the sunshine this afternoon. Looking forward to it. Oh, can't, can't wait. Uh, just on that Schnitzel Arm thing, you say it's, it's 20 minutes ago that was reported, wasn't it? It's um, yeah. just, uh, you just wonder what. And that, of course, that's our fifth place car, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Um, so just um, now, now, just got some footage of the lineup there. Um, is it in there? It is. Yeah. I believe. Let me. Um, well, we'll have the national anthem of Germany whilst we have a quick look at the lineup. Schnitzelarm uh, Mercedes AMG is in its proper position. The only other thing that I did notice, and that was much earlier on, was that the Pro Sport Aston Martin number 17 was warned, or at least uh, had a, an email regarding their noise, and they were uh, asked to, uh, if they had any questions about that to go to the clerk of the course. So that was um, just uh, at the end of top qualifying the top 30 shootout if you weren't with us for uh, that earlier on a stunning first lap of two from Klaus Bachler and Falcon came within just under a couple of tenths of breaking 
Raffaele Marcello's qualifying lap record, which was set here last year. Uh, 8.09.05 is the record. It still stands, but only just 8.09.219 for Klaus Backler. Dennis Olsen on the second lap for the Herbert number five Porsche went through in an 8.09.591. And absolutely, now anything under 8.10 is always very quick. Uh, around here. The race lap record set by Rinaldi Racing's 296 Ferrari came last year at an 8.08.006. Uh, so that is something to watch out. We haven't seen anything anywhere near that so far this weekend, but a number of teams with uh, new or development tyres this weekend. Certainly the Rover BMWs have been talking a lot about that, about them trying to get the tyres into the window that suits the car, the car into the window that suits the tyres, starting pressures, etc, etc. And the... Uh, and that clearly is still work in progress, which is why, Peter, we have this weekend, because people are uh, not locking anything in for the big race uh, over the Corpus Christi weekend, but they are... And you keep saying that, and we've even had a couple of the, the, the drivers now pick up on what you say. They are collecting data all the time. I'm sure it isn't that way around. I think we're just observing what they do. But, uh, uh, yeah, exactly exactly so. And you just look at the, um, the, the Piccadilly car. They've got four drivers in that car for the 24 hours, and they've cycled two through yesterday, and two more have flown in today, as you mentioned earlier, to drive, drive it in this race. So two apiece uh, rather than three and two. Just... It's, it's just communication and then it'll sit there and the debrief there'll be lots of information going back and forth and I think it was something we touched on yesterday wasn't it John not just how manufacturers make these cars uh, a big operating window for pros and amateurs etc but uh, you've, for different style of drivers you're all, four of you in a car all going to drive it slightly differently but you've all got to work together um, something I just did notice John on that uh, race organisation uh, race control messages that the the formation gaps, uh, formation lap groups one, two, and three. It's looking. Am I right in reading that? That there's three minutes between each one. Yeah, three minutes. Correct. Yeah, three That's, minutes. No, no. So, one, that, so, let me see. It very tight for the first group catching up with uh, the last group, doesn't it? So you'll you'll hit the back of the traffic pretty much halfway around mm. the first lap. I would have thought maybe towards the end of the end of the first flying lap for you, you'll be. Uh, sorry, second flying lap for the front of the field. You'll be catching the back of the field who are on their second flying lap. And it takes uh, a good, well, 10, 12 minutes to run round behind the Seat Formento safety cars. We typically don't see intervention vehicles uh, bunching the field up here. If you're joining us, on this afternoon, this uh, Sunday afternoon here in Germany. Good to have your company. Uh, we see these control vehicles at the start of the race. We do see vehicles, sometimes even recovery vehicles out on the track. They are covered by code 60s and by double yellows. Uh, the only time I've ever seen a safety car out there, and I still think it didn't pick up the field um, was when we had that very short race that had to get stopped in the middle of the night um, and, and we all sat around waiting to find out what was going to happen that was 2021 um, when the the rain came heavy rain and bad visibility um, the second closest finish of all time but the shortest race ever and it was Grello the uh, Manti Porsche that won that race but as I say I, I still don't think they collected the field it's all about respect and uh, or being the marshals and time at uh, this time on a Sunday to say thank you to all of the marshals here at the Nürburgring and on the Nordschleife and indeed all of the volunteer marshals who have been working this weekend in motorsport not just uh, here at the Nürburgring or in Europe but around the world the simple fact, I know I've said this before, but I make no excuses for saying it again, is the simple fact is that our sport at any level, even at the highest 
professional level of motorsport cannot go ahead without our marshals and volunteers, whether they're on post waving flags, whether they're part of the rescue and recovery or the track services teams. Um, you give us your most precious gift so that we can go motor racing and that most precious gift is your time. Uh, and though volunteers, the very greatest levels of, if I may say, use this word incorrectly, but the very greatest levels of professionalism that go alongside your dedication and quite often your bravery. So we thank each and every one of you as the first group already on to the Nürburgring Nordschleife, 25.378 kilometres if you drove right down the middle of the circuit. And almost four tenths of a kilometre just pit in to pit out, by the way, as well. So it is quite a run down the pit lane. The cars to watch, well, all of that first group really, the drivers reporting to us this morning after the first standard part of qualifying which kicked off at a um, inhospitable 7.15 that the track was rubbering up nicely after yesterday's four hours uh, and I think that was borne out by the times that we saw certainly from Klaus Backler. Uh, Falcon, two Falcon cars running Falcon tyres uh, there's a couple of classes here that have mandated use of certain tyre manufacturers but for all the main classes and certainly for SP9 uh, which is the GT3 category that is open tyre competition and uh, I, I went I counted seven different manufacturers uh, when I went through last night um, as I was waiting for my schnitzel there'll be schnitzel tonight as well there will be schnitzel tonight a little bit earlier finish this evening as we went into the darkness yesterday so you'll see on quite a, a, pretty much all of the cars, you'll see Falcon stickers on. They are a sponsor of the event. There are cars running Falcon tyres. There are uh, Goodyear's, Michelin's, GT, amongst others. Uh, Hankook, various different uh, tyre manufacturers have test and development areas here, much as the manufacturers do if you go to Gottlieb Daimler Strasse which runs parallel to the Dottiger Ho it's just behind the main road that is right runs right next to the Dottiger Ho driver's left and then you'll see a number of these uh, design engineering and testing centers that gives them quick access onto the Nordschleife both on tourist days and on the what are called the industry days as well now, we've got a problem for uh, BMW, and that car's not going to get out onto the circuit. It's the car in 100, starting in 102nd position, which is the 514, and that car has... I think that's dead stick. I think that has conked out completely, and uh, that is absolutely disastrous for the 330i from Zorg Rensport and it's not going to get off the off the Grand Prix circuit that is Pierre-Jean Ooms, Kurt Struber and Ham, Hans-Joachim Theiss so the Dacia is back Oh, the BMW's got going again. Control, Alt, Delete. So it will, I think, just jump onto the back. I don't think it'll be allowed to make up all of its positions because it um, fell behind the last car. This is a car that was in the wars a little bit yesterday. And uh, Zorg Rensport, doughty competitors, a number of people burning the post-midnight oil up and down the pit lane yesterday in order to get cars back out today to get their drivers... Uh, some more laps. Uh, also, we should mention that this is, of course, the uh, fourth round of this year's Nürburgring Long Distance Series, NLS Langstrecker Series, and the VLN and the 
an amalgamation as ever of ADAC motor clubs running the races this year. We have got uh, two teams that are perfect so far, with three ve race victories, and therefore lead the championship, jointly lead the championship. Can they go four for four? Beautiful weather. Uh, not a huge crowd here, but there'll be far more down at the more accessible spots. A few people on the hats and back, which is where the second group are going through, third group are going through now. Brünchen is always a good place to go and watch as well, just as a big car park just behind that. A lot of people bring their uh, mountain bikes, and I've noticed over the years more of those are electrically assisted. Very smart. John, if I, if I may, the, um, the, although this, this, for the first time ever, the qualifiers this weekend count towards the, the championship, because they've obviously lost, it's not actually NLS 3 and 4. NLS 3 is in June and 4 is the beginning of August. Uh, oh, really? but, yeah, 1 and 2 were last weekend, 6 and 7th of April. This counts, but it's not NLS 3 and 4. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then, and then, and then you've got five, five, in, 5 in September, sorry, in October, and round 6 is in... 11. I think it's because of this split with NLS and ES. I think what the, that's why they've counted this towards the championship this time round. But it's not technically uh, three and four. Right, OK. Uh, we have nine different timing zones. One and two are basically the Grand Prix circuit, which uses the little cutout, so it's right then immediately left. Uh, and then intermediate two is the end of the hats and back. Uh, to intermediate three rather is the end of the hats and back the short one up to uh, Arenberg at the top of the hill die Nürburgring Nordschleife die längste right Rennstrecke der Welt the middle of the Einzige circus top rennen was man in seinem leben einmal gefahren haben muss looking, already looking forward to das 24 stunden big rennen one. ist für mich persönlich das Absolutely rammed. Ravenol, ADAC, 24 hours of the Nürburgring. And we'll be bringing it all to you if you can't get here. Our programming starts with a special midweek on Wednesday. Die from the Thursday, Friday, and all of the, the action on is Sunday. The practice sessions. There is one of every, pretty much every German race car you don't want to see. And something that you don't realize exists. When was the last time you saw uh, two or three or four Audi 50 uh, cup race cars? They didn't even know an Audi 50 existed if you live outside of Germany, did you? It was the Mark 1 VW Polo. It was also marketed in Germany. Sind die Bilder, auf die wir gewartet haben? Das ist der absolute Hammer. Aber ganz im Ernst, die Fans auf der Nürburgring-Nordschleife sind ganz, ganz, ganz besonders. Including the Group 5 type Capri with the big boxy arches on them. Uh, and then you get the oddities like uh, the little NSUs with the rear engine, the 1000cc cars. And that's all on Saturday morning before the big race, which of course last year was history made. First time since well, 20 years that a non German manufacturer had won. It was still a German team. And uh, the first time ever that an Italian manufacturer had won, it was Fricadelli with their Ferrari. So the leading cars then heading back towards the start finish line in absolutely picture perfect conditions. I think this is even possibly uh, a little bit better than yesterday. It's not quite as overcast. We've got a little bit of cloud forecast for, for later on. It's there at the moment, weaving left and right as they come uh, down to in the last third of the. Uh, last third of the lap at the moment. And then, of course, the run down the long Dottinger Hall. There'll be lots and lots of waving. Right, Peter, I asked you this before. 
So one race down, qualifying down. Now, the, the start was, has, the, the last couple of start, the start we saw yesterday rather, all three classes, very tidy. Um, there's no need to save the car now. Do you take more risks here? Or do you want to get the car through the four hours? I think it depends where you're starting on the grid, doesn't it? Um, if you're at the front, you're just gonna, you've got nothing to lose, so you just... Well, sorry, you've got, you've got everything to lose, haven't you? Whereas if you're a bit further down, you've got, uh, you've got nothing to lose and want to get up there. I would love to see that Ferrari uh, to get up there amongst a great seat in P3, as in just, just a little bit different. Um, it's not necessarily pro Ferrari or anything else. It's just good to see it there, particularly with this, the 24-hour winning car from last year. Um, it's that, it's that first lap, isn't it? We mentioned about those three-minute gas between uh, batches, uh, groups one, two, and three. Um, you've, you're only gonna, you've, your best opportunity is nearly always on your first lap, and certainly here, given that it's free of traffic. So um, I think you've just got to go for it. The cars, the majority of the cars at the front of the field will not be doing the full championship. The getting to the end and getting your points far more important for the likes of some of the Cup 2 runners, Moon the Motorsport, who had a great first Keir Kramer as well. They had a great battle in Cup 2 uh, in the race yesterday. I expect to see that running right to the end again. Watch out for that gold and black car, the blue and white Mulner cars. Three cars in the top six at one stage towards the end of the race yesterday for Mulner. But uh, they just had to make a couple of splashes of fuel, but still finished, I think, second and fifth. So those cars will be looking for points as well as getting their drivers as much as they possibly can in terms of experience around here. There's some big names uh, here. Felipe Nazza has been here over the weekend getting experience. We had uh, Jack Aiken last weekend. Kamui Kobayashi all qualifying and getting their laps in for their permit so they can drive the bigger cars. And uh, that suggests to me that, well, we think that this is a highly impressive field this weekend. We had 131 cars for the race last year, back to uh, rude health, but there are more manufacturers coming forward with the GT4 and GT3 uh, Mustang that they are campaigning throughout the rest of the world. I would not be surprised at all to see Chevrolet with GT4, GT3 Corvettes coming here next year, not this year, and quite clearly Toyota stroke Lexus have some ideas, hence can we call Biashi here, not only a WEC driver of course, but he's the effectively team principal as well. Um, I wonder if he has to have a word with himself sometimes if he's not happy with how, he's, how he is as a driver or if as a driver he's not happy with the car. Interesting concept. The first of the groups then, which is the top category cars plus a couple of SPX cars. SPX is for cars that are difficult to fit into any other category. The Glicken House, the light blue cars with the red, white and blue, the Tricolore are down the middle. And that car built by uh, Jim and to be on the pace of a GT3 car. But of, of course, it doesn't quite fit into that because of they haven't uh, built enough road cars as yet, although they are working very hard. And the other car that's in there, which is an SPX, is actually a Cup 2 Porsche. It's a a, a Porsche Carrera Cup car, but it's running on uh, Falcon tyres rather than uh, the... Sorry, it's not run on Falcon tyres, but it's not run on Michelin's either, is it? Um, at the back of the group, that's the number 60 car. Uh, might just get a quick glimpse of it. There it is going through. It's the white car. It's run on Hankook tyres. Um, sorry. Porsche's running odd tyre options or alternative tyre options and there is a Falkman tyred Porsche on pole position which is to drivers right and I'm not sure that that is the best place to be Herbeth on the right hand side on the left hand side of the track and that is effectively P2 but it gives you the line into the first left hander 
and it's not much of a right-hand turn. Four hours on the clock, and we are underway, and immediately the Fulton Tyres car pulls across to the right-hand side to try and block. But now, can you get up alongside? Oh, it's the old cutback, and the, the Paul Sitter goes very, very deep, and that's the lead taken immediately by Dennis Olsen of Herbert Motorsport in the number five red, white, and black car. Klaus Backler just uh, slightly fumbling the start there. And I think that was Christian Menzel going past him, his teammate as well. I think you're right, John. Daniel Karlo Karlovitz went through in fourth, and I think he's held on to his position in the number one Frigadelli racing team. No, he hasn't. That car's dropped back as well. Where's the Ferrari gone? Down seventh, eighth position, maybe, uh, as he has dropped down to ninth, in fact, as they go down to the Dun Dunlop hairpin. Uh, the Goodyear hairpin, excuse me, now at the bottom of the hill through the Schumacher S. This is the first group, remember, so far more changes today than we saw yesterday. Cloud of dust in the background from the midfield. That's, I su suspect, is somebody dropping wheels off. Two of the Bill Stein cars uh, side by side. They and we started uh, fairly well down. It's the number three car in 16th position. And Adam Christodoulou started the number eighth car. He was in 19th at the last split. But as they go out onto the Nordschleife for the first time, Dennis Olsen has a tidy and handy second and a half lead over Christian Menzel in second, who's gone up from the second row of the grid. Klaus Black Backler will be cursing himself. Just missed his breaking point into that first right kink before the left-hand turn. Remember, they don't use the full... AMG Mercedes-Benz arena section on this configuration of the track. It's Schnitzelam in the number 11 car and Marcel Markovitz, who has gone through into fourth. Ajan Guven, second yesterday, third on the road, but promoted to second after the yellow flag overtake by the Falcon car. Guven in fifth for Mantai, then the two share a sport. Audis, which were there or thereabouts. They started on the front row yesterday. Uh, they're telling us overnight they just felt they didn't have the raw pace of particularly the Porsches. But uh, they finished third and fourth in the end. So the second group comes to the line. Peter's going to be keeping an eye on the splits, I have no doubt. As the second group comes to the line, they are led by an impressive field of Cup 2 cars. And it's the Black Falcon Team 48 machine that is on pole position on driver's right. And what a mess down into the first corner. Holds on to the pole position just about. The K. Kramer cars are the gold cars behind the bright red machine going through there. It's the Huber Motorsport cars, the Teichmann Racing car in there as well, the 131, I think, as they went through. And the Avia WS Motorsport car, the number 120, right in the mix. These are all Porsche Carrera Cup or Super Cup cars. They're down through the years in various iterations this is type 992 of course have been used as very effective endurance racing machines uh, they go for a very long time uh, not unusual not necessarily here but not unusual to see them uh, during the pit stop cycles well inside the top 10 and in fact yesterday I think the best of them the K. Kramer car finished in the top uh, top 30 certainly uh, they got up just outside the top 20 I seem to remember they're heading down towards the Vidal Jacquin leading that group the 8.30 best of the front wheel drive cars as usual that is the works entered Hyundai and once again Hyundai from the US, Brian Herder Autosport sending a team of drivers. We wish Robert Wiggins all the best after that nasty accident he had last weekend. Get yourself fit. We've got uh, Michelin Pilot Challenge 
for you to continue with. Aston Martin getting a little bit racy going on to the Nordschleife for the first time for the second group up alongside. Now, that was the Dorm Autosport number 269 that was having a look at the Hyundai, the white car. So we'll see if he's got that done as they string through the uh, through the hats and back. They've been swapping their cars around, their drivers around a little bit. Uh, Fabian Vettel has started the blue and white KTM Crossport. It's the younger brother of Sebastian. Has done some sports car racing in the past as well as some open wheel. In fact, I, I, I said this yesterday and I forgot to go and look it up. I'm pretty certain he's raced here before. So third group then. And they kick off down towards the potential pinch point as they come down. BMW leading them, that car being the, I think that's the 88 that's uh, started. Oh, there's a touch right at the very beginning, and that's one of the Mulner cars, uh, I think. Let's have a look as it goes through. That could have been potentially suspension damaging there for that BMW, and yes, it's uh, got problems. You can see the right, it's the Subaru again. Sorry, yes, I did that yesterday. Do you learn nothing, hind of? This is the STI Subaru number 88 class winner from yesterday, and that has got rear suspension damage after contact at the first corner. I said it was a potential pinch point, and so it has proved to be. Let's see if we can ID the Porsche. Blue and white car going through at the bottom of the hill. And that is not the start that either of those wanted. Still waiting to see them go through the first timing loop and get the starting drivers confirmed. Well, that Porsche's dropped back. It's is that, a 319 that, yeah, car. Yeah, it's a 319, isn't it, John? Yeah. Now, that car, that looks like... Yeah, Schmickler performance uh, car. Yeah, it looks like a, a Nürburgring special lap because it's got a much bigger rear wing and under tray on the back. So um, what, what class is that running in, Peter? SP3T. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not running in the Cup 3 class for GT4 cars. Uh, already, and you were spot on here, Peter, already the leader's coming to the end of the lap and we've not got all of Group 3 under the Nürburgring. <laughs> Yet Dennis Alton was leading last time we spoke about uh, this opening group, the leading group, and he will come back on to the start finish line. And Dennis Olsen sets uh, a lap of 8.19 from a slow rolling start. Christian Menzel holds on to second ahead of his teammate for Falcon, Klaus Backler in third, then Chan Guvin from Mantai. Schnitzelam, another yellow car. That's the first of the Mercedes. Then the two share a sport Phoenix Audi. Frickadelli and the Daniel Kalvitz driven uh, Ferrari has made up a position, dropped down to ninth, but he's got back ahead of the apt sport line Lamborghini Huracan. Then it's in 10th and 11th, the two Rover Racing BMWs, 99 from 98, Augusta Farfus from his teammate, and here's the STI into the pit lane. Now, he hasn't gone on to the Nordschleife. The, you can take the shortcut back round, and this is right rear suspension damage. There's a mark on the carbon fibre sill as well, but the right rear Falcon tyre, and they are running Falcon tyres, uh, has got a mark on it, and it is dangling down, and that'll be... That's basically going to be an A-arm. That's going to be a wishbone, isn't it, or a control arm 
on the back of that one, Peter. Yeah, it's a fair, a fair chunk of the. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a oh, it's a proper proper clout on the on the Porsche as we said. It's a just when you said that, that pinch point, that it's actually clout. The, so the Porsche has gone through with it's on lock, turning right to the wheels, Correct. obviously pulling out, and it's it's hit the tire. It's almost like a karting incident, isn't it? It's run yeah. run over it and jumped in the air, which will not done it any good at all. As I say, there's a big big chunk of the uh, the sill missing. I was thinking back to the start of that, John. That uh, it was absolute sublime optimism from Dennis Olsen there. You mentioned that they don't use the Mercedes Arena on this layout of the circuit. So normally at the start of this race, it's a very, very tight, acute right-hander. Where at this layout, it's a bit, a bit more of an S. So you've got a sort of right flick and a left flick. And what he did was he went over to the left-hand side of the track and basically straight-lined it to jump ahead of those Falcon cars, which was, I mean, the parting of the ways has to happen, the water's... The track has to be there for you to do that, and the traffic. But he didn't miss any opportunity to do that. And jumped into the lead. Fan fantastic start by by Dennis Olsen. And an 8.19.5 standing, well not a standing start, but a rolling start lap. That's a pretty very impressive slow as well. rolling start. Yeah, yeah, very slow. Yeah. It was Tim Schrick, by the way, uh, behind the wheel of the STI, the Subaru. Uh, and moved up into SP14 this year. Thanks, uh, JJ. Uh, bigger engine. I'm told by uh, our Austrian correspondent. Hello, JG. Good afternoon to you. Nice to know you tuned in. Won the class yesterday. Don't think that car was headed yesterday when I did the the rundown uh, at all. So, first lap in the books for the leaders. Uh, we'll come back around. Don't have our full camera coverage this weekend out on the Nordschleife. I know um, one or two of you have been asking the infrastructure investment here at the Nürburgring over the last few years has been considerable and there's now uh, fibre all the way around. Meantime, the usual rough and tumble and mirror banging of the Cup 2, the Porsche Cup car classes goes through with the whole field pretty much together from 30th on down or over. It, it was across the line, it was Avia from Black Falcon, from Huber from Black Falcon, from K. Kramer from Mulner, Mori Kratz, the best of the blue and white Mulner cars. And he's moved up actually because he was scored across the line as sixth. I reckon he's in fourth now. The yellow mirrors just going down to the hairpin at the bottom of the hill. And there's another one of the Mulner cars in there as well, which I think is Peter Turting in the 124. He's, uh, what, three, four cars further back from his teammate. That's the car with the blue mirrors. Further back. Thank you to Mulner for making those slight differences. Sort of gold on the better placed of the Möller cars. <laughs> Meantime, the Subaru STI mechanics are uh, getting... Now, are they just taking... Yeah, they're just taking the top suspension wishbone um, from the spare rear subframe on that car. Um, and Patrick undoubtedly drawn to it by the uh, the presence of open sandwiches. Pit lane reporters around the world, all the same. Uh, somebody drove into my right rear wheel and hit me, says Tim Schrick. Yes, he's not happy at all. Not happy at all about that. The team's got quite a bit of work to do, but they'll get that car back out, I'm sure. But any chance of a decent result has uh, disappeared there. I'm not sure how you read that one, John, in terms of... I put it as a 50-50 racing incident at the first corner, to be honest. I wouldn't say somebody drove into the rear wheel, nor did anybody actually chop the chop it. I think it's just one of those things where it's inevitable at the start of a race. You're trying to go for the same piece of track, and as ever, two into one won't go. Yeah. You can see by the, the damage on the side, the right-hand side sill of the Subaru, that... You know, the, uh, the Porsche was well alongside 
the question will be, was it alongside enough? Um, that's for the, the race stewards to make a judgment on, and they have got the footage that we've seen, and they will have other footage as well. And that's the point. You've got to look at it from different angles, haven't you? Because there's, you know, you're absolutely right as to where that damage is. But does that mean the Porsche, in this case, has harpooned the Subaru or has the Subaru yes. turned in on the Porsche? And that's why you've got to. And that's what the officials are so, so good at as well. There's no decisions made away. I get from the Subaru team's point of view, at this point, it's incredibly frustrating because it's the start of the race. And it's, at any point, it's frustrating. But you've got to look at it from so many different angles and just assess what did happen. My, my humble view on it is the only angle we saw was that it looked like, to me, I'd put it as a 50-50 racing incident, and it's just, it's one of those things. But I'm sure if I was in the car that's out and re being repaired, I may not feel the same. Just saying. Mm. Yeah, I, it's tough. Um, start of a four-hour race, you've got to ask yourself, why is anybody pushing that hard? And then the answer to that question is what you said 10 minutes ago, Peter. Uh, the opportunity to overtake is at its best at the start. Um, so, you know, 15 minutes have elapsed. Uh, it's risk versus reward, those little decisions that may come back to haunt you. I suspect both of those drivers, if they had that restart again, probably wouldn't have that accident. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's finding that balance, and I, I totally agree with something you said yesterday about that. that uh, Boarding on ridiculous line of if, you know, if, no, if I no longer go for a gap, I'm you know I'm not a driver or not a racing driver. Um, well, that's ridiculous because you can go for a gap from 50 metres behind. It ain't never going to work because you know <laughs> uh, yeah there's the sending it and the gap's closed, Peter. That's the other thing. You've well, got to make sure that you get into the gap before it disappears. Well, as, as, as a teammate of mine said a few years ago, and he happened to be world champion, um, Jamie Campbell Walter, uh, as he said just in a debrief at one point, just about other people actually, and just said, well. You know, cars don't disappear. No. And it's, it's a very good point. It's still a physical mass on track, and you haven't got Correct. a right to get through. They're still that You've got no. to give them respect. They don't just disappear. And not only that, but you, you can compromise your race, which is pretty pointless. Yes. yes. Leaders in traffic, as Peter Snowden predicted. He's alongside me, John Hindorf, in the Global Broadcast Centre, live around the world from the Eiffel region of Germany. It's the second four-hour race of the qualifying weekend for the 2024 EDSA Ravenel 24 hours of the Nürburgring and the blue and green-ish Vulcan colours they are iconic now aren't they really and they've not changed that for years I remember in the original Gran Turismo you could have the Vulcan coloured cars on uh, a variety of you Fulton Colours and a variety of the race cars with those uh, faded stripes down the doors on either side. And that is Christian Mensel who leads from another classic, uh, this one revived, uh, racing livery. It's the Herbert car in second. Dennis Olsen back in a Porsche uh, for this race. Dennis with uh, strong ties to the uh, VAG group of brands down through the years. And that is the uh, FAT colours, uh, fat turbo colours, uh, that most famously were on the Dower Porsche 962 LM that won Le Mans in, the, in somewhat controversial circumstances in 1994. Is when they took a racing car, turned it into a road car, and exploited very cleverly, exploited a loophole in the regulations, which had just changed that year in terms of what you could and couldn't do with the prototypes and the racing cars at the front of the field. But if it was based on a road car, uh, you had far more, far more latitude. So Dow built a road car. John, while we're talking about this, we failed fail to mention, of course, that 44 Falcon car Menzel is actually ahead of Olsen now. Uh, no, he, uh, yes, correct. Yeah, absolutely. I, I thought he'd take the lead at the beginning. No, um, he had, of course. He just no. got past his teammate. Yeah, good point, mate. Thank you about that. So a swap of Porsches at the front of the field. Um, and so where did that happen? 
because he was ahead, wasn't he, when they came back at the end of the first lap, of the second lap, excuse me. So when we saw them on the start-finish line, he's, he was already ahead. So he's done that out on the Nordschleife somewhere. Uh, in fact, it was on the start-finish straight. There you go. So it's now sandwiched between both of these uh, Falcon cars, the uh, Dennis Olsen stuck in the middle there, so a fabulous start, and now suddenly got, uh, he's having to, this is really, really got to earn your money here, because he's busy trying to get that lead back from uh, Nico Menzel ahead, but of course he's got uh, Backler right behind him as a teammate, and this is where um, Falcon can actually work as a team together. Yeah. They were love, very I'd love good. to hear the radio comms on this one, John, from the yeah. pit. The... Falcon team worked the tactics brilliantly yesterday with the winning car going two laps longer into the race before its final stop and coming out with a major, almost a full minute advantage because of the track conditions. It was a code 60 at the start of the Donegal Hall there. Oh, it opened their window with how they ran. They ran 27 laps yesterday. They've just gone through Breitscheid. Up the hill now, heading towards Bergwerk. Right-hander that leads uphill. Top three absolutely together through traffic. That's one of the BMW M240i's. Bergwerk now, and the leaders locked together. Top three. 27 laps yesterday. That would suggest to me you could do four, seven lap stints. Um, we were... Probably could have got 28 laps in yesterday had it not been for the long cord 60 for the BMW that was uh, on its roof uh, down at, uh, where was that? The Siphon, wasn't it, yesterday? So that did knock the lap times out quite a lot. Added a good minute to 90 seconds on at the front of the field. So 28 laps might be a possibility today if we go clean. Right, Cup 2. And after having other people at the front of the field, we're back to Kate Kramer and Mulder again with the uh, number 148 Black Falcon car right in there as well. Is that the battle behind the leaders? I'm not sure that there's anybody else further up the road. I think they've fought, fought their way back through. The 120 is shown as the leader, the Avia car, with Black Falcon in second, and then... Then it's Di Martino and Kranz battling for third and fourth. The second of the Black Fulton cars is that 148 leading the second group through the... Well, it's the third group, actually, through the hats and back. The tricolour coloured car is the Huber Motorsport 125. And this is... I mean, this is like a Porsche Cup race, exactly as we would expect. Then it's Teichmann Racing. The third of the Black Falcon cars comes behind that is the 104. Then Peter Turting. Further back, the 164 is a that's a cup three car going on to. So that's Black Falcon leading Avia from Schmickler. Uh, that is SP10 actually. Those Caymans. So the black and white car leads from the blue and white car and the mainly white car. That's Black Falcon, Avia and Schmickler in 44th, 45th and 46th position. And then the Aston Martin that, that is in there is the Door Motorsport leader in SP18, the number 169. That was started by Wustenhagen, who's not listed against that car. But that, uh, don't read anything into that. There's been a number of driver changes over the weekend. Leading in TCR category, number 830. Uh, that car with Manuel Lauch behind the wheel is in 48th position, is right in that battle as well. Not inside the top 40. Yesterday, meantime, at the head of the field, coming back towards us on the start finish line down the long Donninger herd, just coming in to the little left kink. 
under the Bill Stein Bridge. You just very much on your fingertips there. You want to put as little lock into the car as you can. You don't want to scrub off any of that top speed. Three Porsches equally spaced back onto the Grand Prix circuit. And at the end of 25 minutes of racing, completing the third lap, it is Christian Menzel who leads. John, if I can just go back to the uh, the Subaru and uh, Porsche incident, yeah. Um, great um, fan engagement, as from Alan Prosser uh, at Lanzarote Camel. Always good to have his input. Um, we mentioned about different angles of that car, didn't we? What might it be? And it's uh, he's, he's done some stills. He's always very good at this, isn't he? Alan takes uh, takes stills from the screen and sends screenshots of. Uh, basically, it does look, unfortunately, not from the angle we saw, but it does look like the Porsche has literally lunged to the Subaru from a very, very uh, long way back, which um, might explain why the Subaru not too happy about them having the car taken out at the first corner. And the, the Beetle RSR is going very, very ah. slowly through Hudson, but very slowly. Looks... Uh, I think it's going to pull off to one side. Right rear problem? Yeah, look, it looks like it's just going out of sight. I think that's going to pull to one side. Pull off. It is. It's stopping. Hello to Tom Marshallak, who is in the US and tuned in, drinking coffee from his Shelby mug. And that is up at Kidibakua, I think. And if that car doesn't move, we might get our first chord 60 of the day. Lead us back onto the Nürburgring. It looks like demonstration driving as if they're not trying. I will tell you that is not the case. Not the case at all. They are absolutely on the ragged edge. That was uh, 8.19 again last time around. Fastest lap in the top three was Klaus Backler in third. With an 8.19.3, that car's fastest lap of the race. Still heavy with race fuel at the moment. How good does that Herbert car look with the fat turbo colours on? i have to speak to Robert Renauer. Hopefully there's a one forty third scale model of that. I have to have that for the growing collection. Three and a half hours to go. And the battles continue all the way down the field. At RSL underscore studio. Hashtag RSL underscore N. 24 if you want to get in touch thank you for joining in around the world Olsen just squeezed through and got the lead taking the lead back again all the way around all the way around the outside yeah that was at the top of the hill at Svenkreutz he's gone through Arnberg now and down into the Fox Hall keeping an eye on the battles further down the field I uh, think there's going to be a slow zone with these cars. And they've actually gone past that part of the track. So the leaders are up at Adenauer Forest, and the red and white Herbert car is back in the lead. And they, for the moment at least, have clear track ahead of them. Now heading towards Callan Hart. Coming up over the top of the brow of the hill just before Callanar. This is the leaders we're talking about here. The rest of the field still streaming through the hats and back in the third group. Oh, big moment at Callanhard for the second place car. That is Christian Menzel now. He's number 44, very, very sideways indeed. So he was trying to get the power on coming out then. Now down drive diving down the hill to Kittyback Hall. And that was the pass for the lead a moment or two ago, right round the outside, Peter, as you rightly said. Uh, that is um, heart in mouth. I nearly said something else there. <laughs> but it, it was uh, it was brave, let's put it that way, to know that you're going to have the, brick, the, the, the grip on the outside there, uh, right at the top of the hill at the Sweden, Swedenkreuz. Swedish cross. It's it doesn't look like much of a corner on the track map. Um, 
as you saw there, it is. And there's normally a little dab on the brakes just to settle the car down because it's over the top of a... Uh, over the brow. And since then, Dennis Olsen has cleared off. He's put more than a second. They're up towards the mid curve now as the one of the team members of uh, the new Beetle RSR car that was uh, based on the RSI that came out a couple of years ago uh, and built as a single make racing car. And these guys have been trying to develop it and get it out. Looks fantastic. Love the old Group 5 style wide arches. Not sure he knew what was... Uh, what was up oh, there? Well, it's burnt, burnt Albrecht, it's Albrecht, isn't it? And he's, uh, he, he, he seems very jolly about it, John. It's a, it doesn't seem to be that. The car is definitely parked to one side now, so I suppose you haven't got a, a code for that yet. Um, it's de it definitely pulled off at Hanson Bagel Kittlebell on the right hand side, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, just an update on the. Uh, BMW number 150 in, in SP8T, that's the Jimmy Broad bed, bed car. It was the right front tyre that brought it into the pit lane and it has gone back out again, uh, although clearly having lost ground, it, they were not sure that they had the pace of the Aston Martin. Uh, Amal Metzger uh, talking to our pit team yesterday, saying they felt they didn't have the pace but they would go for a win and take a podium they've dropped down to 107th and 5th in that class so that's going to be a long drive back now that said of course if had any sense they've refilled it with fuel it might just open up their fuel window a little bit if there are any long code 60s Hello to VS, says, great to be hearing you guys. How many of these entries do we see at the WEC? None of them is the answer to that. Um, the GT3 field for WEC is set for the season, so there's no wild cards, only two from each manufacturer. As the Cup 4, Cup 3, excuse me, Harley Horton, uh, with a right, a left rear puncture and the carcass of the tyre has shed right at the end of the lap, thank goodness, and it's on the grass. Harley, young British driver, just coming in to the pit lane. Having a chat with him for Midweek Motorsport this week. So not the weekend he was hoping for, competed last weekend as well. As that tyre disintegrated, um, left a bit of debris on the track there, though, didn't it? You were actually arrived yeah. on the main carcass going off, but there's quite a bit of uh, debris in the centre of the track there, which are, other people are now going to pick up as well. We also had our first uh, visit to the pit with a driver change, and that's the Kievan Sports Racing uh, Hyundai 130N. Um, and there's a driver change on that, so it's quite early in, so less than 24, 25 minutes in to do a driver yeah. change. Thomas Schoenfeld uh, took the start, did the first couple of laps, and Pascal Fritscher has uh, come out. Uh, by the way, Bernd Albrecht was saying we don't have any further information about what's happened, but we just know the car's got no forward movement. Uh, they're tapping on the drive shaft at the moment uh, out there to see if they can get the car back to the pits. They want test kilometres this weekend. Harley Horton's car in the pit lane at the moment already showing damage on that left rear corner and signs of repair uh, fairly um, robust repair they're looking to see if there's any further damage underneath that left rear corner after they've had the problem with the tire makes you wonder what cause and effect there doesn't it john you saying there's, there's there's a lot of references there of some some damage before and uh, whilst the car might have been tracked and done, you just wonder if there's something left over from that it's obviously had some Correct. barrier impact with that left rear previously so just wonder if it's any sort of a existing damage already that's come to light now and i think that's what they were looking for actually rather than bits of tire they were looking to the inside of the wheel it's a five stood fixing of course so they they've got the 
electric drills out. I think that you were spot on there, Peter. They were feeling, you could see them feeling with their hands to see if there's anything sharp that might have caught, caught the inside shoulder. The tyres do get put under quite a lot of stress around the Nürburgring, of course, uh, with the curbs, with the takeoff and landings. And if you get a bit of sidewall movement, which you will do here, you don't want anything to be catching that. Um, the BMW M240i 653 uh, in Adenar Forced area with a bent front left wheel. Uh, Thomas Schoenfeld out of that Hyundai telling our pit reporters the start was good. Got off a bit late and I had a slight collision in the first corner. In the second lap, lap I lost traction, the tyres had no grip. So I've come into the pits. Uh, meantime, the number 11 in very early. This is the Schnitzelheim car, isn't it? Marcel Markovitz in that car. And Jim or Hertling is taking that car over. So are they opening up their strategy? Remember, there is a sliding scale of pit stops times, time you have to spend in the pits from pit in to pit out, depending in the first part of the race, depending on how many laps you've done. The further in the race you've gone, the longer you have to be stationary. And then once you get inside the last stanza of the race, 70 minutes, isn't it? Um, you then back timing to the end of the race and then your pit stop time is dependent on how long it is to the end of the race. And yesterday, it was timed to perfection by the two Falcon cars. They got the balance between standing still, filling up and putting new tyres on and pace out on the track. They got it perfectly right. Leaders then are just coming out of Adenar Forest. Meantime, Frank Stippler. Is it Stippler actually who started that guy? It is, isn't it? Uh, fourth position for the Share of Sport Phoenix car at the moment. Looking up the road to see if you can see the back of that leading trio. And I don't think he can at the moment. Here's the Schnitzelarm racing team in early. Marcel Markovic started the car. He doesn't look overly happy. Thinks he got hit by Ferrari in the first corner. So clearly not happy. I thought his uh, demeanour was uh, less than jolly, I think, Peter. That's a very good way of putting it, yeah. I'm just. Did you mention a slow-running um, BMW? If it is, it's 653, yes. the Adrenaline Motorsport car, um, yeah. which is... I is that on the bed front wheel? Yeah, I think that's almost come to a halt at Carousel. All right. Might have got by just being approaching that area very, very slowly, which is not what you want to do in that run up to the carousel. It's super, super fast, and uh, that you, you feel very prone there, I'm sure. Um, just going to see if it's actually come to a halt on the track or not. Hello to Chris Suhu, Scoot, Chris Suku, using at RSL underscore studio. Breathtaking competition. The close driving seems more like a police chase. The in-car visuals are amazing and scary. I don't think I could even do this well, even on Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo played a huge part in taking this race to the world. And I'll tell you now that I learned the majority of the track, at least which way it went, on early versions of Gran Turismo. Let's get back to the Cup 2 battle. A little water leakage as well from Marcel Markovic after that contact with the Ferrari in the first corner. Uh, not much aero damage, uh, or a little aero damage rather, uh, as well on that car. So that's why he's brought it back in just for them to check it over. Meanwhile, Cup 2, led by the... <coughs> still led by the Avia Black Falcon. Uh, with uh, the Avian Black Folk car, with the battle for third position between Kay Kramer and Mulner. The Di Martino and Kranz cars just going out onto the Nordschleife now, so that's third and fourth position with the two leaders, actually, have disappeared. Uh, 
up the road by a goodly margin. How did they get split up? Is there a running line astern at the early part of the race? Just quick update on 653, the adrenaline guide. He's still going, John, but as, uh, right. as you quote, very, very slowly, and it has just made its way. Uh, it's only just got to Brunchen now. Right. Uh, update on that Schnitzelag car. The team saying there was only a small amount of damage. It will be able to continue, but they had to bring it in. A uh, number of you, including VS, asking about the noise we hear from the onboard of the Audi GT3. Um, that is, um, I do know this. It, is it? It's the um, pump for the the air pump for the uh, gear shift and brakes, isn't it? That. Uh, charges back up again on the overrun. Answers on a postcard, please. Crossing the line, the Toyota in the alternative fuel class, the TT7 from Team Griezmann. Or Griezmann, excuse me. The E-fuel car. Uh, problem at Brunchen. That's a 653 adrenaline car, has now oh, finally stopped. It. Yeah. Right, stopped on the exit stopped of Brunchen, yes. Right, here come the leaders, three Porsches again, then a gap back to Frank Stibler. Just can't quite see them back down the road, then Aichan Guven. Then the second of the share of sport cars. So Guven coming forward and splitting the two share of sport Audis. Cross the line. Mental into the pits. Oh, in, interesting. At the end of the fifth lap. So this is what they did yesterday. They split their strategy. Now, Olsen can't respond to that now because he was already passed, of course, that this is one of the cars that was behind him. So this means this will be a shorter, potentially a shorter stop because of the pit lane stop timetable. And so where are we now? Uh, end of lap five. So kind of making a note of this. So that is the number 44. Um, it'll be easy, easy three stints of eight laps, which we know that car can do from here on in. Or possibly two of eight and one of seven at the end. So they, again, are going to do this long run into the final hour of the race, which worked perfectly for them into the darkness yesterday. Hello to Sol Mattia. I'm relatively new to the Nürburgring Ring 24. What is the significance of the qualifying race? How does it relate to the actual 24 hours? That is a very good question. And... Um, it basically, it helps with the seeding um, for race week itself. We had a preview of the top 30 qualifying earlier on this morning, which we will do again on Friday in race week. And uh, so basically it's getting the cars through into that top 30 at the front of the field so that they can take part in that top qualifying. It used to be to get the blue light, but all the SB9s get the blue light now, because they are the faster cars. And now we have got a code 60 at Brunchen. And thank you to G. G. Hovenaz. I said that right for the picture of the 653, the left front wheel of that BMW. Um, jaunty angle, I think you might say. It is, um, it is not helping to steer. It's not helping anything there, to be honest. We've also got another, we've got 491 Martins Motorsport, uh, Hyundai 130N uh, off or stopped at uh, just the other, just post the uh, carousel. It's actually exited the carousel and starting to come out of there, and then that stops as well. That's, caused, that's causing a one the code 120 at the moment there, which may escalate to a 60. 
depending on if it's barrier damage, etc., or whatever, what or marshals need to attend to it. But I suspect it's just stopped at the moment. That's what it's looking like. That's 491. So the 44 Porsche from Falcon has rejoined. Two BMWs having a bit of an inter Nissan tussle going on to the Grand Prix circuit, being the number 98 of Raffaele Marciello, who's already made a pit stop, as has the number 72 of Max Hesse behind them. So that's why they're so far down the standings, 25th and 26th position. So they have also done this interesting short stint at the start of the race. Maybe taking a leaf out of the strategy book of Falcon yesterday. Now there, I think to make this work, they've got to do eight lap stints, which is possible. I, I think today, with a slightly quicker race, we could be looking at a 28 lap race today we did 27 yesterday but as i said we had a couple of very long code 60s for barrier repairs and car recovery which added a lot of lap time so the first car of the top category on the track that has done a pit stop is the falcon motorsports number 44 in 23rd position the lead after 45 minutes is held by Dennis Olsen. It's only sixth lap at the moment. I'd expect him to pit this one or the next one. Typically you don't do, because you've had the formation lap, you don't do the full complement of laps. Got another stopper out on track as well, which is just after uh, Fans Garden, which is the, um, it's not Adrenaline Motorsports Day, is it? It's their triple four numbered entry, uh, Cayman, which is in the V5 class. That's that was a, a class winner yesterday. Peter. Yeah, but it's not a, not looking on target for that at the moment um, today. And we've, now we've teamed up a series of, we've got a code 60 coming up to Power Act, and we seem to have a series of Carousel, cars. yeah, Carousel exit, and that's yeah. where the leaders are now, and they are in traffic. So I'm, I'm thinking that'll be for the recovery of that BMW. No, no, it's a bright orange car. No, I've got a, one, I've got a five, we've got five ten stopped there as well, which is uh, BMW. Yeah, um, I think it's a three. I think it's a three two eight. Or three oh no, no, we've got we've got a, we've got a multiple car accident. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, there seem to be more. There's exactly. three just... cars, four cars. That's that's the cup. That's some cup two cars in there, I think. Yeah, there's a one one two uh, fives in there, John. Which is that, Hoover, that's Hoover five Motorsports. cars. Hoover Motorsports yeah. cup two car. Yeah, one two five. That's involved in that. I've uh, seen one, five eight, cars. Wow. So one or four so is the Black Falcon Cup 2 car, so there's been a... It looks like there's a, they've, they've all been trying to share the same piece of track, unsuccessfully. So we've got 491 yeah, parked further back, which I'd mentioned already, hadn't I? That had parked on the left, so uh, I'm not thinking... Uh, th these are further on, they're a bit further on from the carousel exit, aren't they? It's almost the approach to her act, isn't it? Yeah, that is a long code 60 area there. There were at least five cars, three of them in very poor condition to drivers right and a lot of of the drying compound there um, I think we might have lost Peter Terting uh, in the Mulner car in that I uh, certainly the Shearing driven Mark Mulner Motorsport was part of it the Teichmann racing car 131 the Rettenberger driven car the um, red white blue car that was involved in that as well just from what I saw from the onboard of the leading pair as they were going through hard to uh, identify every single one of the cars well, I can tell you what they are John we've got our ticker does come up very quickly yeah we've got 104 Black Falcon Cup 2 car 124 uh, Moola Motorsport Cup That's 2 Peter car. That's Peter Turtick's car. Yeah, yeah 125 
Huber Motorsports Cup 2 car. And uh, five, that, yeah, that's the red and white car. Yeah, sorry, and yes, 510, uh, which I think was the first one I'd mentioned, which is the the BMW, the Japanese entered BMW. Yeah, the 510 isn't the Cup 2 car then, is it? That's, no, not that's, at all, no. No, that's a, it's either a 328 or a 330i. It's not actually listed on my entry list to which, I, which model it is. It just says BMW. Above we've got 330s and 328s. Yeah. That's taken out a sizable number of the front-running Cup 2 cars. Um, I believe... Actually, because the, the top nine are now... Well, and everybody beyond the top nine, I think, were involved in that. I think we might find that the... Uh, the 106 might have been involved in that. The 125 we've mentioned, the 131, uh, the Titan car, I'm sure I saw that car there as well. So I think that's four or five Cup 2 cars, plus at least something else. But well, 106 is still running, John. That's on the dotting Ahoa. Right. That car was delayed, so I think it was involved. Okay. Leaders coming up to the end of the lap. And the two Porsches together now. Let's see who comes in. I suspect at least one of these cars will come in. Leader is across to the right-hand side. And that, that is a case of do what he doesn't. Because the Falcon car was over to the right-hand side of the road. But as soon as it saw the leader staying uh, to the right and going in, it has stayed out. So the 33 completely splitting the strategy of the two Falcon cars is going through uh, onto its seventh lap. So it will do no more than seven. You never do more than seven at the start of the race. And follow him through. Ichan Guven, by the way, is only two and a half seconds away from the lead now in Grello. Yes, yeah, so a two, two lap different uh, strategy there, isn't it? Five and seven for these two cars. Yeah. The teammates, Fal Black Falcon they were cars. Only, they were only split by a lap yesterday but the car that went on the win was two laps better off at the end than everybody around it and stayed out and made that strategy work now i think we've still got code 60s yeah so this is interesting because with code 60s out there it sort of evens it out Con, uh, confirming uh, those car numbers and a possible oil spill there did look like a big shunt to drivers right the BMW number 510 the cup class 2 cars of 125 131, 104 and the 491 in there as well that one had been there for a, a little while longer but that is that was a sizable incident as a whole slew of SP9s are coming in. The top nine have not stopped down at Juta Racing. Into the pits, the SPX leader as well, the Glinken House. Jim looking on with his trademark hat on and his uh, radio headset. Thomas Mooch brought that car in. Gorgeous looking car. And that came out of Jim's head, let's not forget. Remember when he ran the, uh, his homage to the Ferrari P45? That was a piece of kit built on a, was it a 488 chassis or a 360. I can't remember. It's a long time ago now. So, leading the motor race, Klaus Backler with Chan Guven now within a second. So the 33 car heading up to, in fact, just lost the lead has just lost the lead on the drag up to the Swedish cross. So the Falcon cars, not quick, up the hill towards Svedenkreutz. That was exactly where the Herbeth car went through and took the lead earlier. So the team car to the number 44, which is just coming down the hill now to go on to the Nürburgring Nordschleife, has just lost the lead and we have a new leader, and it is Ayachan Guven 
for Manti and Grello. So that's what that's the third different Porsche that we've had leading the motor race, Peter. Interesting to me that it, that happened at exactly the same point on the track as did the the Manti, the red and white car going through. So does that mean that the Falcon cars are running a wee bit more downforce, do we think? Because certainly they're not pulling up that hill. It's an interesting point. Very, very interesting point. I'm just I'm, I'm tempted to see what these very interested to see what these these do. Um, I'm just by the way you mentioned that long uh, code six here, it's Marshall's post 139 through to 148. Uh, okay. ten, 10 Marshall's posts and it's just a it's just a plethora of, of signs here. Uh, it looks like a speed awareness course on my my tracker. <laughs> <laughs> If you are just joining us, Peter Snowden and John Hindorf, hello. Nice to meet you. Um, Matt Hunter talking about, well, hang on, we'll cut to that in a moment. Uh, get an opportunity to review the pass for the lead. Actually, it was a little further back down, but uh, so the run down into the dip just before Schwedenkreutz. But that said, Chan Gouven making a decisive move to the right-hand side, the outside on the run into the Swedish cross left-hand corner, just at the brow of that hill. Uh, Matt Hunter making the point. He says, as far as I'm aware, it's 200 euro per metre of barrier damage. Um, he said, uh, if that was the same on any of the uh, gate platform sims that I use, he said, I'd owe the circuit the equivalent of the gross domestic product of Spain. That's the best part of sim racing. The repairs don't cost you anything. And the impacts don't hurt. So I think if you do the tourist lap you mentioned, it's uh, it's read the small print, isn't it, John? Oh, absolutely. The, the actual cost of a tourist lap, is, it looks, look, on paper, looks almost minuscule until something goes wrong. At more to the point, you can come across somebody else's incident and, and avoid it. And uh, uh, it's the, the repairs, it's the downtime, it's the nuts, the bolts, it's the barriers, it's the grass, it's the paint, right. it's absolutely everything. You look at it and it's eye-watering. Uh, but people so people are still drawn to it and want to go and do it. And I'm, I'm sure we've all seen on different platforms that are available the, uh, these tourist laps of people making you know, the errors and the top ten mistakes and whatever. And it is, it is phenomenal the mistakes people make and the, the oh, damage goodness. they do to their cars, they mind the barriers. Uh, a huge drop of oil coming out of the carousel. And I wonder if that is what has caught out those Cup 2 cars. There's a bright orange car to the left-hand side as the leaders are going through Hoa Act now. And then the conflagration to the right. There's been several cars into the barrier there. And I can see Peter Turtling's car there, the Mulner racing car. There's the Titan car. And there is the... Uh, one of the other the Cup 2 cars, and then there's another non-Cup 2 car. That has been a significant accident there as the leaders begin to accelerate again now with Ayachan Govin in the bright green car hammering away. Let's have a word with Jim Glickenhouse, Patrick Simons with him on the pit wall. He'll do this one in English, so we'll fade this one up. Jim Glickenhouse on the pit wall. Patrick Simon asking the questions. They're down in 26th position, but they have made their first stop. 
Uh, and remember, they were not at the race. They did not race that car at all last year. They were concentrating on their WEC part season. So it's well over a year since that car has raced in competition. And therefore, you would expect them to be shaking a few bugs and gremlins out of it. Just on the hour mark, I'll give you a rundown in a second, but I quickly would like to rattle through the class leaders because we've had some significant cars that have uh, been involved in issues for the classes. Manti leads, of course. Glickenhaus are leading SPX in 26th position. In Cup 2, it's the Avia W and S in 29th position. I've already cracked the top 30 in a battle that has been split up after a, a big kerfuffle just after the carousel. It's taken out at least three or four of the fancied runners in Cup 2. Pro Sport Racing's 175 leads the SP10 category. In 39th and 40th is the best of the front-wheel drive cars, the Hyundai. As the leaders are coming into the pits, that's why I didn't want to do the overall at the hour, so that's spot on the hour after the first run and the end of seven laps, as we suggested it would be. Hyundai and 40th then leads TCR Cup 3, Adrenaline Motorsports Team Manhattan Wheels with the number 930 Porsche in 42nd and 44th Dome Motorsport have the SP11 lead with the 55 KTM very non-KTM colours, there's no orange on it at all. It's uh, light blue and white, uh, that car, just spotted out there. Uh, SP8T, Door Motorsport, 269 in 49th position, E-Fuel, Team Greisman, uh, Greisman, the 227 is in 55th. 72nd for the next class leader, that's another Adrenaline Motorsports team, Manhattan Wheels, the number 650, that leads the 240 IBMW class. Plus Line Racing Team backing up their good performance yesterday in SP7, their number 80 is in 75th and leads that class. 396 leads V6, that's another Adrenaline Motorsport Team car, the, number, the position 77. Schmickler, powered by Ravenol, lead SP3 team, 319 is in 78th position. The 500 that won yesterday in VT2 leads VT2 rear drive in 79th position. That's another adrenaline car. And I need to scroll down and my machine doesn't want to let me do it. So more than one way to skin a cat. Uh, so the four... What's that? Four, six, two, Team Merton's car leads VT2 uh, front wheel drive. And can't I see those today? Let's make that uh, a little bit bigger. Uh, the 446, the Galder Hopfer Hassan Pedis car is in 83rd, leading V5. The 731 leads V4 in 95th position. The Hoffer racing by Bonk Motorsport BMW is leading its BMW class in 101st position. In 118th uh, is the number 13. Now that's interesting. That's SP14. Standby caller. Uh, so that is the VW Beetle. Yes, of course, that's dropped down. So does that mean the Dacia is not running the day? Yes, it is. But it's only second in SP3T. Yes, that's right. So they are not leading their class. Where's the SP3T leader? Uh, that is in 78th position. Let's make the performance Porsche. Ah, so. A little bit more competition today for the Dacia fan favourite. That's how it is at the class leaders as we've now gone through the first hour at the top of the field with them all now having made their first pit stop. And that's why I did it that way around. Uh, Nico Menzel in the number 44 leads for Falcon by getting on for 17 seconds over the Rover Racing number 98 BMW. Now, these are the cars that stopped early, remember, after just five laps. So they're well through their second stint now. They're, what, a quarter of the way through their second stint. Then the Schnitzelam 
number 11, again, an early stopper. Now, they were forced into that because of contact uh, early on. But that number 11 car, sometimes you've just got to make the best of it and do what you can. And at the moment, that number 11 is being joined, joined, driven by GMO Hertling. Hertling. Uh, then it's Mac Hesse for the BMW, number 72. After that, it is the number five of Herbert Motorsport, car that led earlier on. That's the fat turbo car, red and white stripe machine. Fabian Vettel down in the pit lane, done his opening stint in SP11. And the top 10 made up by Max Hasser, uh, sorry, Ricardo Feller, Max Hasser, and uh, Lawrence Vanto, uh, sorry, Dries Vanto, and um, Gilles Gunom. Uh, in respectively, the two share a sport PHX Audis, the Rover Racing BMW number 99, and the Get Speed Mercedes. Uh, and Chan Guven now having led the race, let's not forget, but by staying out longer, has now dropped a minute and six seconds to the leaders. And that's about pit stop time as much as anything else. Now, will that come back to them where at the end of the race? Um, from yesterday, it would say we would say not. But there's so many variables, Peter. Um, I, I can't honestly be sure who's got it right, but certainly the cars that stopped early yesterday and went deep into the race in their last stop and well inside the last hour, they basically only had uh, four laps to do at the end, didn't they? Uh, in in the, the last stint, three laps to do at the end in their last stint. And that worked yesterday. It may work today. It, it certainly did. Can, can you remember, John, a potentially daft question, I hope there's no such sort a of thing as a daft question, but the, the Falcon car split their strategy yesterday by a lap different. Today it's two laps different. Correct. Can we remember which one, forget that it got demoted after they finished first and second on the road, which yep. one did the short, was it the shorter or longest stint, the five or the six lap that actually won on the road yesterday? Uh, it was the five laps. It was the five the laps. Yesterday. Okay, fine. Yeah. I, I think, I think that it was but I, um, I I can't unfortunately I did I forgot to save my um, strategy <laughs> same same that's yesterday. what I was asking you <laughs> yeah. um, so on that basis then the law of averages it'll be the opposite today with the seven lap stint that works <laughs> so, let's not get ahead of ourselves we're trying to predict too much aren't we the, I I just think um, I, I just think there's so many variables here that a strategist's job is it is, it's it's not the one you want to have. I'll, I'll, I'm very happy carrying cups of coffee out of the out of the the pits uh, and running errands and cleaning wheels. I do not want to be a strategist here because there are so many things that can change, corner to corner, lap to lap. That I I, I don't know. I think you know you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. Sometimes we saw a a 24-hour race uh, won a few years ago when actually the team that won made a mistake and put the wrong tyres on their car. They thought they were putting on full wets and they put on inters or, or vice versa because they had only just changed tyre manufacturers and they and they read the uh, they read the tyres wrong. And actually it turned out to have been a happy accident and they ended up winning the race because things can change so so quickly. Uh, it's an amazing place. Uh, by the by, the way, uh, Chan Guven stayed in the 911, so he's going to do the first half of today before he hands the uh, the 911 over to one of the other drivers. He has the least experience on the Nür Nürburgring Nordschleife, so though you wouldn't have thought that, by the way, he overtook the uh, the Falcon car for the lead. Uh, somebody must have of split a sump or something like that. I think it is. I, I'm not sure what the first car was that went off there. Was it? I'm, I'm, was it four seven one? Did I say that? Yeah, I think you might have. Um, I'll, just, I'll just answer a question of Dan Priest. He said, any idea why the 150 car of Jimmy Broadbent, Steve Brown, and the rest of the team so far down the order, they had a front puncture um, at the end of the first or the second lap, Daniel, and came in and changed it. Steve was at the wheel. 
Um, he's back out and running now, but obviously the lost time coming into the pits and they quite clearly lost a bit of time getting the car back into the pits. I think it was, I could, I could check if you want. So uh, standby caller. Um, I've got a feeling it was front left, but as I've said that and go back down. Uh, yeah, oh, I was end of the first lap. Uh, it was front right, front right. There you go. Um, and that car continues. Last I looked, it was fifth in class with ground to make up. The only good thing about that is, as I said, it might just open up the strategy for them. They would have topped the fuel up. It would have been a very short pit stop. And maybe it just gives them a little bit of a wider pit stop window, uh, a lap or two later in the race. Fastest laps, by the way, uh, at the top end of the field, 8.14.0 from Ayachan Guven's car. Well, in fact, he's only driven it, so it must have been him in the Mante. And 8.14.0 uh, for that car. We came very close to breaking the qualifying record this morning. If you weren't with us, single lap qualifying. Uh, the Falcon Porsche um, clocking an 8.09219 against Raffaele Marcello's qualifying lap record set on the Friday of race week last year of an 8.09058. And he was stuck behind another car for part of that lap. I think it was on. Can't wait for Friday's top 30 shootouts during race week. We'll have that for you in sound and vision, of course, along with uh, an extensive and extended set of coverage programmes that start with a special midweek motorsport on Wednesday. Get our grid walk in or pit lane walk in as well for you, as well as a preview. That's all in race week, so it's that just over a month away. Battle for fifth and sixth with the Herbert car being inexorably gained on by Ricardo Feller as they come to the end of the Dottie Her and in behind them is the Chris Harzer, the second of the Shearer Sport Phoenix cars and that trio will come onto the Grand Prix circuit almost as one to the right hand side for Ricardo Feller in the Audi the red and white Porsche with the slightly better light. Oh, and pulls better down the front straight. I thought Fella had the run there. There's traffic coming out of the pits as well. One of the GT4 Aston Martins. And now this battle is for fifth, sixth and seventh. And they're absolutely together through the first S onto the Grand Prix circuit. Got the leading uh, Hyundai right in front of them. That stays dutifully out of the way. All battles for position here, down the hill. Watch for the second of those roads on the right. That's your breaking point down at the bottom of the hill. Looks like the Robert Renard driven car, Robert owner driver of the Herbert team, just went a little bit deep into the Goodyear hairpin at the bottom of the Grand Prix circuit. Holds on to the position through the Michael Schumacher S. Now to the top of the hill. Try and stay on the circuit here and not use too much of that runoff. And you come back from the middle of the road to plunge down the hill towards the fast right-hander. That's flat and then into the Vidal chicane. Before you head out onto the hats and back. Now at this point, you'd say you've weathered the storm. As long as you don't let them up the inside, the left-hand side is you go up, but again, you come from the middle of the road, and that was a slightly more defensive line by Robert Renard in the red and white Porsche. Sabina Schmidt's curve, downhill. Camber sort of helps, helps, then doesn't help. And now get the balance, let the car float through the hats and back, through the traffic. Opportunity possibly here for Ricardo Feller and Chris Haase. We've got Dries Van Ter not that far behind. It's about another six seconds back from that battle. And he's got a whole host of other cars chasing him down. 
end of the hat and back. Just very quickly, John, that multi-car incident up at uh, just the other side of the carousel, the one car that was involved in that was the, the BMW, so the Japanese entered a car from, oh, from Tokyo, Yokohama and Kuala Lumpur, actually. So, uh, the, that's slowly, only just about to make its way back to the pits. Now, that, I haven't just said that, I'm just watching it on the track yet, and it's just disappeared from going into the pit to going back up to the other end of the dotting of her. So, uh, whether that's a, a, a GPS glitch, I'm not sure, but to, it's certainly moving still, so that would suggest that's not the car that's uh, caused the issue, and I think we're, we're spot on on calling that one. I think it was, um, I think something's clouded a, a curve yeah. uh, and, and cracked it some, and that's caught all those Cup 2 cars out. Well, and it's significant, actually, because involved in that is the 491 Hyundai yeah. i30N, which is the championship leader in the NLS. Uh, in, in addition to the Hyundai, at the carousel exit, we had the uh, Porsche number 103, the 131, the 124, that's the Peter Turgeon car, as we mentioned. At uh, the carousel exits, the... Uh, 125, 140, uh, the 50 rather, uh, the Audi as well. That is the GT3 Evo 2, a number 50 car. That also at post 148, which is the ap approach to Hoa Act. So that was an absolute kerfuffle up there. And that is a disaster then for one of the two cars that have won all three rounds to date. The 491, the Mertens Hislop driven Hyundai i30N, the NLS Joint Championship leaders. So that is a big, uh, big story coming out of the early running here. Uh, just this note from Klaus Backler, by the way, he said the uh, two Falkman Tires cars drove, drove, chose different strategies and they started with a medium tyre. They felt it might have been a little too cool for that. Um, it was a bit of a lottery. Didn't get the tyres up to temperature on the formation lap, so I couldn't defend the position at the start. Uh, I dropped the third and stayed in that position for a long time. Now we've got so an Aston quite a bit answer. of damage. Uh, this is the right front yeah. of... This is one of the GT3 Valkenhorst cars. Also in the pit lane, the GT3 Cup car of... Uh, which one of the Cup 2 cars? Is that the 148? It is the 148. As into the pit lane comes the 35 Falcon Horse car. And I, I thought, I, I was going to say, I wondered if it had had a puncture, but the, the right front tyre is still inflated, Peter. So that's been contact, has it not? It has. I mean, the, the whole front of that, that wing is missing headlamp and everything's gone. So that's had a, as actually right, that's contact with a, a suggestive barrier. Although it hasn't damaged the, the wheel and tyre and suspension on that corner, I'm not quite sure. But um, most of that front missing. Uh, 148 Cup 2 car. Uh, having uh, Nick Damon, you say would be very, very happy with this because there's there's, roll, there's more than one roll of gaffer tape going onto that car. <laughs> yeah, he has, he has got shares in this, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. That's yeah. rear left, uh, and they've taped the uh, the rear quarter up and taped up the. I, I'm not sure that the damage I think will be all right. What I worry about is the fixing on the. Uh, most forward part of the left part of that rear valance. It's going to get air under, um, isn't it? I think that'll get air under it, and I am not. In, I am not certain at all that that is going to uh, to hold when you get onto the faster part. Of those Cup Two cars. You mentioned it yesterday. Those Cup Two cars with less aero are very, very quick in a straight line. Very, very quick in a straight line. Remember. Um, we had the GT2 cars racing in the um, as a test in the 24-hour race last year, and they were insanely quick down the Dottinger Hall, almost too quick. Uh, 300 kilometres an hour is about as much as the organisers want to see here. A few years ago, Peter Kate, who assures me he will be in the race this year. Hello, Peter. Uh, they ran an Aston Martin with a smaller rear wing, and that was pretty quick down the tubes as well. And there was a 
bit of an agreement that they would pull full revs down the straight to keep them under a reasonable uh, straight line speed. Yeah, but to be fair, in fairness, John, that uh, Peter Cate is, is an incredibly intelligent man, but when he gets the, behind the wheel of a car at uh, the Green Hill, he does put his brain in the glove box, and I mean that as an absolute compliment to him. Yeah. Um, hearing from race control, um, due to a major oil drop in the section between the carousel and her act, as well as numerous impacts, a, a lengthy guardrail work continuing, and that will be... Accord 60 for the foreseeable future. So lap times now are round about nine minutes. So now, how does this affect strategy, Peter, for those people who stopped early? Um, this will reduce the number of laps. I th I, I'm not sure this is the best news. Uh, also hearing, thank you, G. Uh, Hervenaz. Um, so I don't know what the G's for. Um, that the two, the number two hundred and sixty-eight, which Peter is looking up even as we speak, uh, has passed uh, Brünchen, where there's a lot of uh, a lot of spectators there, and that car has passed Brünchen with a puncture to the rear right of that car. So thank you for our eyes and ears out on the. Nord Schleifer at the moment. 268 is the uh, the BMW. The V2 Heck uh, rear wheel drive uh, VT2 car that isn't on our entry list. It's the Japanese car, isn't it? I'm glad you just said that because I was frantically looking for it, John, thinking it's not on my entry list. <laughs> I, I, I thought when I saw that number that it rang a bell, so I um, I went to the timing screen. Schnitzel now racing, fourth position for Jay Moore Hartling. All Schnitzel, all day. It's a restaurant chain. And if you don't believe me, and certain people didn't when we talked about this when they first came on the scene, they ran one of the GT2 cars last year, funny enough. Then one of the Mercedes GT2 cars, uh, in addition to that GT3. Go and look them up. Um, spectacularly all schnitzel menu for schnitzel and, and I have to make a shocking revelation that I've not been to one of their restaurants yet and I, I'm very partial to a schnitzel I, I'm, I'm sorry John how, how has this come to pass I, I, well exactly exactly well we know what we're doing next month then don't we yeah thing is there's an awful lot of very good restaurants around the Nürburgring everybody has their own version of uh, schnitzel of course and I have to say I'm very keen on a bit of nice fresh green salad um, and a bit of mushroom sauce pill sauce Leaders heading back out onto the carousel. And uh, this is the story that we gave you a moment or two ago down in the pits. Klaus back to uh, started on the medium tyres, which weren't uh, perhaps optimum. And he did admit to not getting them up to temperature on his formation lap. How important might that have been? And. Uh, now we have got oh dear this is significant for the uh, number 930 now this is a big penalty and it's for ignoring a code 60 for the adrenaline motorsport uh, um, am cup three car and Joshua Bednarski is going to get an, uh, sorry, that's the 8962 um, that's getting this one, an 85 second time penalty and Bednarski getting a 
penalty point on his DMSB license. However, 235 seconds for David Griesner in the 930 and two penalty points on his license. So, mm, not good. Not good at all. And a further update on that first corner, first lap incident from Subaru. Tim Schrick saying, we brought the car in and had another safety check. The wheel bearing has had some damage. So we'll swap that over as well. And then we'll get going again. So that's uh, good news for them and for STI followers the world over, of which there are penny, uh, plenty, of course. So pit stops coming in further down, but on the front of the field, Falcon uh, and Christian Menzel on his 10th lap at the moment, I reckon, Peter. Um, yeah, I just, just thinking, John, you were musing just at the beginning of this race that you thought this might run to a 28-lap race. Not now. No, I'd say not now. It's not, I just think it's hard yeah, like now. now. This, this prolonged barrier repair, isn't it? It's, uh, it's, I mean, I think actually we might... It might even only be 26, you know. Well, um, the computer waits for a little while before it starts to give predictions, and it, it has just said 27. That was its, that's okay. its first gambit. But I, 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 as soon as I saw that uh, message from Race Control about the long work at uh, the exit of the carousel up to Hua Act, um, I, I thought at that point, that's it. We're not going any further. Uh, then 27. Uh, Jimmy Broadbent is installed in the 150. Class winner last Sunday. Bill Stein BMW in the GT4 configuration. Off strategy a wee bit here, that 150, because of that first lap puncture. Um, however, has made up a position in SP8 T, now up in the fourth position. Steve Brown brought it in. They've got past the GTI, uh, the GT, excuse me, GTI. Reading it literally, GITI is the name of the tyre company and it's uh, pronounced GT, GT. Uh, tyre car. Uh, that car has just made, ha hasn't yet made its second stop. So I'll wait to see if that goes through. So Jimmy will take the car out. The next target for that car is the Door Motorsport Aston Martin number 269 in 50th position. So let's see if they can get back on the podium in the next two and a half hours. Through in the Cup 2 battle, Avia still leading with the 120 from Black Falcon in second. Then uh, the third place cars, the Mulder Motorsport 122, which is just eased ahead of the car that was battling all day yesterday, the 121 of K. Kramer Racing, the gold and black car. These two had a heck of a scrap yesterday. Changed position about four times in one lap of the Grand Prix circuit, it seems. It was fantastic. through to the Michael Schumacher S. And now to that tricky left-right combination at the top of the hill. You've got to get the car slowed down and balanced for that run down the hill. I'm being roundly castigated by our Austrian contingent and Swiss contingent for potentially desecrating uh, a Wiener schnitzel with being served with a sauce. On the side only, only on the side. Never never pour it on the top. Now, see, that's key, see? That's key bit, on the side. Good intel. Is that battle for position again? Sabina Schmidt curve in Cup 2. And that again is Mulner and Keir Kramer. Mulner, 122, has it. Okay, Kramer wants it. And amazing, you see, you make an attack and drop back, and he's dropped, what, eight, six, eight cars lengths through the hats and back there because he had to get out of it, going down the hill at the start of the hats and back. Such a rhythm part of the circuit in a track that has many such 
areas get out of rhythm or out of kilter with these corners that come thick and fast at the start of the Nordschleife and you can lose an awful lot of time. Just crossing the line now, second place in the race, which is the BMW number 98 of Rover Racing. That's Raffaele Marcello behind the wheel. Again, remember the top, so the top four or five as it stands at the moment. Uh, yeah, the top five stopped early. And in fact, the 72, the Shell Helix car, Max Hezer, he took over after just five laps. Uh, the Schnitzelheim car, remember, had a problem. So Marcel Martovic came in and he stopped after four laps. So uh, they've, they're now coming round to complete their seventh lap of this stint. So Two. again, we have an offset spit, uh, a off, offset pit strategy at the front of the field. Easy for me to say. And Johanna says, just don't go there, hanged off. It's a matter of ideology. Okay. Understood. Just watching a bit of the onboard there from the 33 Falcon uh, with uh, Alessio Piccarello uh, aboard, monstering Jules Gounon in the Mercedes in front, all the way, literally, after, from as soon as that uh, coat 16 ended at the end of the carousel um, and he got clear. And it was just, I mean, even behind him in the coat 60, he was warming the tyres, weaving side to side, but I'm talking less than a foot off the back of Gounon's Mercedes. Talk about intimidation and tactics and psychology and mind games, etc. Uh, but then just did exactly what we've seen before, that the straight line speed of that Porsche down the dotting hole, getting that toe and got that place done. So across the line, that puts uh, Piccarello up to eight now and Gounon a ninth. Uh, this from David Hahn said, out of the 120 GT Cup, Cup 2 car. He says, uh, that was one of the greatest stints I've ever had. We were at the front of the second starting group. So I overtook the first car on the third lap. And basically, I was alone uh, the, for three laps. It was awesome. And he said, I managed to get through the traffic. I did come through easily as well. Uh, also, we've had a problem for the number 450. That's the Porsche Cayman CM12. The... Uh, modified car that has gone out of the back of the garages and has been spotted in the paddock. The number 17 uh, at the front of the field, the Aston Martin Vantage, um, that car's got an ABS error that's happened just before the pit stop. They couldn't reset it. All of the electrics now are affected, probably a sensor. Um, we'll have to fix it as quickly as possible, otherwise the car isn't really drivable uh, on there. So uh, that was uh, who came in in that car. I think it was Marek Buchmann who started that. Nico Bastian got into the car, but it's not yet gone back out again, I don't think. So that's needing to be done. The new Beetle RSR has made it back to the pits. That one... Uh, was dead stick in the first part of the Nordschleife, wasn't it? Heading up the hill towards Verdenkreuzer. So. Everybody's still enjoying themselves, even if they've had problems. And uh, <laughs> good year on the hat. Another one of the tyre companies that are represented here, of course. Now let's get back to the action at the GT3 part of the field, where Ricardo Feller is right up the tailpipes of his teammate. And that's Chris Harzer in that car now, and Robert Renault is just ahead of that. So that's fourth, fifth and sixth heading uh, to right so they're heading down the hill 
towards the... Oh, just as I was about to get it. Cup three, battle coming to the end of the Nordschleife. Must be due a pit stop, these guys say. They'll have it all ready. And... Adrenaline Motorsport leading for 9.30. In Cup 3, then Avia Schmickler. Note that some of these team names are repeated throughout the classes. There are multiple cars. It's the 9.69, a bit further down the field in seventh in Cup three, that's the SRS team Zorg Rensport car in the Black Fault, and number 931 is ahead of it. That is a battle for position, um, 57th and 58th, 6th and 7th in class, and points, of course, in the championship. Black Fault with their traditional black, yellow, and silver or grey. Get a chance to come to the 24 hours later on in the year the Ravenol ADSA 24 hours of the Nürburgring, please take it. It, it, it should be on every motorsport fan's uh, booklet list. Daniele Diamato driving that Black Vault in 9.31. Basically a GT4 car. Nice little package. The 718 Cayman engine, mid-engine car being a horizontally opposed, a boxer engine. It's very, very low. Helps with the weight transfer in that car. Last time. The only time I've driven one of those, now I think about it, was at Thermal, where IndyCar were racing recently. It was a Continental tyre test. Raced around the long track there. Drove around the long track there in a GT4 Cayman. And very pleasant car it was. Very easy to get used to. Had the road going variant a couple of years ago. Extremely competent is all I'm going to say. John, I was just looking at the yeah. 33 footage on board. Uh, yeah. the, the Falcon car with uh, Alessio Piccarella on board. And more to the point, actually, because it's through the Code 60 area, but it um, the, looks like there's actually a lot of the barrier when I say missing, there's a gap. I, they've removed the damaged barrier, um, oh, so right. we could still be a little way off putting new stuff in because I'm guessing they've had to remove it. It's probably the uprights and things and that that, that are not necessarily in the correct position to go and bolt the new parts on. So uh, there's a physical gap there. Obviously, Code 6, the game parts are nice and safe, but it's a, a great a great opportunity for the onboard to see what's actually going on the outside of the track as well. Uh, lap times have come down a little bit under nine minutes for the guys at the front that's because they've now got used to where the slow down areas are and they'll be pushing all the way into them and they'll know crucially as well where they can accelerate although we've got a yellow flag at tear guarding in the garden in the uh Dottie go oh, i suspect somebody is touring in slowly oh no it's a, a recovery vehicle uh, that's why so it's one of the cars that was involved in that incident is coming back on the flatbed and has got cover from one of the SEAC four mentors. Uh, new for 2024 safety vehicles. Not sure what we've had SEAC, uh, or Cupra, should I say? Cupra four mentors. I'm sure we've had Cupra as uh, safety vehicles before. For a long time, there was a fleet of mainly bright red all Jeep Cherokees, lovely things. And uh, then a variety of VAG products. Although they still used, there was one red Jeep Cherokee that lasted a very long time, a two-door car that they used for towing. There's a Ford um, F-150 pickup uh, that they use as one of the fire, and uh, it's also got the uh, liquid, the oil dry stuff, basically the compound, the drying compound. The quick dry. Behind it, quick dry, yeah. Uh, and it can tour and drop stuff down onto. Uh, here's that great battle for 
fourth, fifth and sixth, cutting through traffic. Fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh now, as uh, Dries Vantor is on the back of that in the BMW. They all are going to go for another lap again. These were the early stoppers, so they will be coming in next lap around possibly the one after for some of them. Oh, headlights have gone on now by Chris Harzer. He means business. Uh, Dries Vantor is the man most likely at the moment. He's caught this gang of three and made it a quartet. And he's, I think, trying to get the advantage before they all realise he's there. Next back is Alessio Picariello in the Falcon Motorsports, number 33. And he can't be that far away from them, actually, because he's just gone through the old Ford curve. Um, he's about four or five seconds behind his all. And then another five seconds back is Gilles Gunon, and the team gets BDMG, the 130, and he's got um, Chan Guven, or Gunon and Guven together. That's not going to trip us up, is it? In the 911 Manti. And that's your top 10, separated by 90 seconds now. Now, add, add actually Danny Hunkadea to that because he's only another 3.6 seconds behind an 11th in the team Bill Stein car. The second of the team Bill Stein cars, that's number nine car. And this has been going on now for at least three laps, Peter, that the Robert Renard driven Herbert car has been. And, and, I'm not saying this detrimentally, but I do think those two Audis could go quicker if they didn't have that car ahead. So in that respect, they are being held up a little bit. Um, but on the other side of the coin, there's not been a definitive try to get by yet. But the fact that the BMW has caught them up says to me that they are losing a bit of time to the cars ahead. I, I, I was just literally just thinking that as you were saying that, John, that there's suddenly that BMW is in touch with them and the, the BMW just doesn't seem to have had the pace it had some other times on this circuit the last couple of years. I mean, this uh, M4 has been extraordinary in the GT3 uh, evolution of it now, this new model, model. It just doesn't seem to have played into, at that moment, that would it suggest exactly that which you said of the Audis. They're just, they're not quite there. And are they playing a bit of a longer game? We're not quite, we're 18 minutes off half distance. So are they, are they waiting? But you can't afford to wait too long, can you? No. Just one Mercedes in the top 10, and that Shields Goon on in at nine. Uh, they didn't show well yesterday either, as we're about to get some more pit stops. Uh, Vulcan Horse Racing uh, with a car in the garage, I think, at the moment being uh, worked on. And that is the Aston Martin, and that car is going no further. I think that's the car uh, that had the... Uh, maybe it is actually. I see a driver putting his helmet on. Uh, that's the car I think that had the ABS sensor failure, uh, which uh, caused it to come into the pit lane. It's uh, affected the rest of the electronics, so they won't do that until they've got it absolutely sorted. Just trying to hear what uh, is being said there, see if we can de decipher it. Uh, Time penalty of 30 seconds for Tim Sandler in the number 170 Supra. He was two kilometres too fast through a code 60 there. Uh, and also that Schnitzelheim Mercedes, uh, Gunter uh, Abera, the team boss there, saying they're still having problems with losing water, which is bringing them back into the pits. They can't fix it. Um, they want to finish the race. Um, they wanted to finish the race, but uh, they did show at least they had some pace there. Yeah, Mercedes not really troubling the scorers yesterday. BMW were outside the top ten of yesterday as well. Oh, well, that's a position made up there, coming out of the code 60. Dries Vantor, fastest right foot first, not fastest finger first. Well, certainly maybe fastest finger off the speed limit, but... Uh, Oh my goodness me, track services vehicle there. Just as they went through, where was that? Uh, my goodness, that was very close. As the, On their driver's right as they were climbing up towards uh, 
that through. But that was a position made up for Dries Vantor on Ricardo Feller. And now he's behind Chris Harzer. And this is still that battle between Robert Renard in fifth in the Herbert Porsche, Chris Harzer in the Audi number 15. Now Dries Vantor in the Rover Racing BMW number 99 and Ricardo Fellow, Fella. And Alessio Pecardiello in the 33 Fulton is now under five seconds behind this. This is going to be five cars shortly. Incredible stuff. So they've just gone through the Mut curve and heading up towards the base of the Caracciola Carousel. That track vehicle, I think, was just heading uh, out uh, or into, sorry, the right-hander at Bergwerk. Another area of slow now. They're getting to understand where this is as they come out of the carousel. They'll be in Code 60 for quite some time here, Peter. I think they, I think they will. It's, uh, I think it's possibly one of the longest code sixes I can remember for for quite a while. To be honest, John, not just we've had longer in terms of Marshall's posts, but uh, not in terms of time duration. And it uh, it does affect the, the race. And you were saying, obviously, it affects race. But you were saying earlier, you, you you wouldn't want on on Earth to be a strategist because um, it, it's so many variables. It just changes it completely, doesn't it? And, and you, you, can't, you can't really get an answer to how long it's going to be. It's not like you can ask race control of how long you think you're going to be. It's like, well, it'll be done when it's done kind of thing. And, of course, mm -hmm. it's got to be safe. That's that's the main thing. Green, the, I mean, it really was a fabulously opportunist manoeuvre yeah. from Dries Van Tour. Uh, actually, the team car didn't help Ricardo Feller there. Um, and the, it looked to me as though the Porsche backed them all up before they went to Green. Uh, and he almost ran into his teammate, fella, uh, into the back of Haase. Uh, Dries Vanter was on driver's right and slipped through just as the green flag was out, I think, at that point. And it was the flag before I was trying to see whether it was a yellow, still a yellow, or it was a, a green. Because he did overtake before that green flag on the right-hand side. Another car travelling slowly on the dotting hoe, just in the yeah. dip, about to rise up to the tear garden. I'm not sure what it was. Just caught a glimpse of it there, but I suspect another puncture. There seems to be a bit of a... Uh, quite a few punches this weekend, haven't there? Indeed so. Uh, this from Aston Martin from the 35 crew. Benjamin Mazatis. Lost control of the car in the hats and back area, he said. Tried to catch the car, but there was contact. I got the car back to the pits. There's no point in continuing. I'm very sorry for my fellow drivers and the team. So, I think the car that was travelling slowly might be the 466 Trinity Solutions Valkenhorst. Hate to say it, oh. Hyundai. Right. Might be. Yes, um, hearing from G. Hervenatz that that was going with a left front puncture, right. 466. Uh, and that was all the way back in Brunschen, so that's a long way. Yeah. Right, here's a pass for position again on the Dottinger Hur, the Audi very slippery in the slipstream and goes by the BMW, which was moving a lot of air just before the kick. But here's the BMW back down the inside. This is Ricardo Feller and Jean Dries Vantor. And Vantor goes past. Feller was scored in the lead. And Picariello, as we thought he might, has caught them up. Now, who pits this time? Surely some of these guys are pitting now. Yes, all of them are pitting. So this is... Well, ah, well, now... So Haza, Vantor and Fella have come in to the pit lane. Renard and Picariello stayed out. Interesting, very interesting. But that has closed things up in that battle just outside the top positions. The two Phoenix, uh, share of Phoenix cars coming in together there'll be full driver change and service with a new set of michelin tires for both of those cars very interesting that i reckon 
we saw the BMW of Vanto Ketchum and Picari Yellow. They were six and seven seconds behind. So that's well over 10 seconds um, cost for the two Audis uh, in that little stanza of laps there, Peter. What was that, three or four laps? I reckon that's at least 15, maybe more seconds being stuck behind the Porsche. They couldn't get past the Porsche anywhere, neither on pace or on handling, and they were just being hampered a little bit. And that's, that's cost them time to the leaders. I'm oh, just, just admiring as well, John. We're talking about the, 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 the synchronized Shearers coming in there. The number 16 car, which for some reason I can't find on my screen at the moment. I'm just trying to refresh. But to talk about how drilled these teams are and how preparation to do. The drop going... down to 17th, 18th and 19th, those cars that pulled in. Yeah, OK. And he, um, yes, Hassa, as he got out, out of the car, um, he... He stood on the still because he got the go jacks. So the car's being rotated, and he's he literally he sat. He stood with his feet on the sill to p plug the new driver in, so he could stay with the car as it was rotated to help the incoming driver get fitted in. So, the, how many times have they drilled that and practiced that? And then we've got a yeah. Porsche facing the wrong way at Tiergarten. Yeah, that, this is the like Schmickler car. Yeah, this is the Schmickler uh, GT4. So this is a SP10 SRO GT4 car. 165, uh, is I, it? I, uh, it is the 165. I think this is one. This was one of the leading cars. Um, let me find SP10. It was the leading car. Oh, you're right. Yes. It was the leading car uh, with. Uh, at the time, it had Claudius Cash behind the wheel, uh, and that was the leading car. He had a decent run uh, on the Black Falcon. BMW, the number 166, Ryan Harrison, along with Mike Skeen and Alexandru Vasilescu, uh, William, uh, William Wax, Vax, that will be, have gone through into the lead and taken the lead of SP10. So that was the leader in category there, as those stoppers are now back out again. So. When do we think Mensel is coming in from the lead? That's the next thing I've got to check. John, I love a little big net there from the, uh, the as the, these cars went out, the two Shearers uh, separated by the Rover BMW in between, as they all disappeared onto the pit lane, the outer part of the pit lane, caught up with the Dacia Logan, who saw them in the mirrors and immediately acquiesced and put his right-hand indicator on, didn't even bother with the blend line, just kept to the right-hand side, let those three guys through. They're a lot bigger than me. <laughs> Another problem for another Hyundai. This is the number 466 car that is now uh, coming very slowly back to this, the pits. Uh, 466, where was that in the running? I'm just trying to work out, John, what's happened to that 165 uh, Schmickler Cayman because it's, uh, it's, it has rattled the barriers. There's a bit of damage a bit further on. We've got a longer lens looking back down towards uh, Tiergarten, and there's, there's grass marks and debris on the track. So it, I don't know whether he's trying to keep it out of the way or something, whatever, but it's definitely... Uh, now the right rear oh, tire is missing. Yeah. Uh, now whether that's whether that's failed and caused it, so it's caused an yeah, effect which way around it. And also, just notice that it might just be in gear jump as the tow truck is pulling that to the safe place, just at the edge of Tear Garden. There, that rear wheel isn't rotating, but it might just be if it's in gear. Or well, the fact it's not even touching the ground and it's just just there. But so there's quite a bit of front end damage. But uh, I don't think that car's going to rejoin the race in a hurry. Oh. Yeah, I thought the same. <laughs> yeah, there's fluid leaking out of that car as well, I think. Or it's... Was it, it the drag mark of the tyre? That was where the wheel was dragging, yeah. yeah. I think the rim. The driver about to get out of that car. And Claudius Karsh will be very disappointed. The Ford pickup truck will move around to the front of the car and drag it behind the wall. Now, that I don't think that car's drivable. Uh, in fact, Claudius is getting out of the car. And hmm. was there another car involved? We don't know. Quick part of the track there for any car. You flat out through the dip, coming up the other side. These cars, the GT4 cars, probably just breaking just before the left-hander. 
whereas the GT3s are still on the throttle there. Time for us to check some of the classes again before we go into another round of pit stops, I think. So let's do that now. Falkman Motorsport leading overall and in SP9 with a number of slow zones, including at the end of the Dottinger Hur. This is going to slow the lap times down even further. SPX, 14th position now for Glinkenhaus, leading that category. Cup 2, still a great battle uh, between Avia uh, WS and Muller now up into second uh, at a gap of about 14, 20 seconds uh, for the 1-2-2. Keir two, two. Okay, Kramer in third, still a second and a half behind the usual bun fight between uh, those cars in Cup 2 and up to uh, 26th position overall, the Cup 2 leader. 34th for SP11, the Dermot Motorsport, number 55, KTM. TCR inside the top 40 for the 830 Hyundai. Then it's 39th position for SP10, the Black Falcon car that we've just mentioned, going into the lead of that car after that 165 uh, in the in the barriers at Tergard. Uh, they're in 39th position. Dome Motorsport SP18 leader is the Aston Martin in 41st position. Uh, the Cup 3 guys, the Avia WS Motorsport 962 Porsche Cayman in 43rd. AT in 61st position is the E-Fuel team Greisemann. Greisemann, excuse me, uh, that's a 227. BMW 240i class is Adrenaline Motorsport. Their 650 is in 67th overall. 69th is the SP7 leader plus Lime Racing team. Adrenaline Motorsport lead V6 in 72nd position with their 396. VT2 rear drive is also Adrenaline as they're backing up the class leads again. 72nd position for the 396. VT2 rear drive is the 500 as it was yesterday, 73rd position there. VT2 front, Team Mertens with their 492. They're at 76 possession, just one ahead of the Schmidt. Schmickler performance powered by Ravenol 319, which leads SP83. It's the 446 in 80th position that leads V5. The V4 class is in 90th position for the 702. And the Hoffer Racing by Bunk Motorsport leads the BMW class in 97th position. SP14 is still led by the 13 car. Now, has that car gone back out again? I saw Raw Lash being. Um, uh, being interviewed in the Beatles. Yes, it has. So uh, that car is just ahead of the Subaru. So those two cars in SP14 have both had problems. They're separated by two laps now, but they are both running again after issues, 119th and 120th. So the Beetle versus the Subaru there. Meantime, the crossboard is coming into the pit lane. All the team have got the orange and black on, but the car looking very different in shades of blue and black. And it really confused me when I was watching on Friday, watching some of the practice on Friday and Saturday morning qualifying. Couldn't work out what it was um, because it makes the car look a completely different shape. This is a crossboard GT2. So with the bigger engine putting out more power, part of the SRO GT2 category that had its uh, se season debut uh, last weekend, wasn't it, at Ricard? Car looking very purposeful with that narrow, uh, those narrow lights at the front. And still, however, with the brilliant flip up cowling they're not taking any chances with this car. Pushed it back in and it looks like they're doing the driver change in the garage. Have they taken... There, they've popped the back of that car up and they're also plugging in a computer. So that's not good news there. So that car's already lost positions. Right, into the pits. Uh, the top, uh, what, six cars, seven cars at the end of their stints. And I reckon that was spot on, Peter, don't you? Uh, oh, no, seven and six. 
No, hang on. Five, no, five, five, five. Eight, eight, eight. Yeah. yeah. So Falcon 44 did eight. Rover Racing BMW did eight. Eight for BMW Team RMG, the Shell Helix car. Uh, only seven for von der Linde in the Huracan. Aston Martin Vantage, the 34, also seven. Glickenhaus, seven. Team Advan, seven. Uh, so... Uh, they were just a little bit short, but we've got a big offset here um, with a couple of laps at least between some of these cars as two more stops at least uh, for the cars in front. Now, the top 11, 10 cars have only done a single stop, so they will have two more stops. This is all going to come down the last pit stop again, Peter, isn't it? It is. Just just looking at our, 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 our computer, our, our strategy, we're thinking of all, on our laps. So we're uh, just we've just tipped into seconds under the half distance mark of, of two hours. We've done 13 laps, and of course that's been uh, we're not going to have as much code 60 in the second half of the race. I would hope so. If you double that, that'd be 26. So I think you I think you're going to be right on 20, 27 still, 26, 27. I think, aren't we? I'm not sure we'll get to 28. What was your computer predict? Was it 27, you said, John? I'm, I'm back to 26 now, back actually. 26, OK. Yeah. Well, on the basis that we've done 13 laps in two hours, so we did another 13 yeah. laps in the second two hours, but the second half should be quicker with less code 60. We might get well, that 27 lap in. If that is the in. case. Yeah, yeah if, if, that, if, if that does I'm, come I'm in. I'm being the strategist. <laughs> no, I, I will. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, hello to Jason uh, Chidwick who's coming out to the Nürburgring for the first time. He'll be marshalling at Hoa Act for the big race. He's tuning in from Canterbury in the UK, introducing his partner to the Nürburgring before he goes to the big race. Uh, that will be fantastic. Jason, thank you very much for all your hard work. I know you uh, uh, work in uh, the UK as well, and uh, as a marshal, that is. So you'll enjoy that. Be safe, but enjoy it. And uh, enjoy the travel as well down there. I presume you're going to drive down. It is a super drive. See some fantastic roads. To pick up some of the battles again then. We have the Falcon number 44 in 10th position with Martin Ragginger behind the wheel of the Porsche. And he's got some close company uh, in the shape of Dries Vanto in the number 99. That is the Rover racing car. A moment or two ago, there was a pass for position uh, with the 33 car. That was a pass for the lead then. So Picariello going through on Robert Renard, which was effectively at that point a pass for the lead. Uh, this time turned the tables. That was a fast Falcon up the hill. We haven't seen that before. It was the other way around. So the draft there, Peter, up to Schwedenkreutz is actually pretty strong for the following car. It certainly appears that way, doesn't it? It's, it, it's that thing again that uh, I think my, my colleague Bruce often says that the, the Nürburgring, it giveth and it taketh away. And just when you think you've got things with it, it can throw a little surprise at you. And what might help one class might not help another. Uh, fascinating stuff still. And it's, it never, never stops around this place. Uh, I know now why the KTM is in the pit lane. Um, They've been warned a few times for the noise level and they've been given a black flag. So they'll be looking to see if anything's rattled loose from the exhaust system from that Audi engine behind them. Uh, maybe turning it down a little bit on the computer to see if they can get back out again. But it looked to me as though they were sort of saying, ah, we've done all right. We've, uh, we've achieved what we needed to do. So the leader is... Alessio Picariello. Remember, he was able to go through to the lead because of the fact that they had made up some almost 20 seconds when the field were stuck behind Robert Renard. And I think that was a key two or three laps there when Renard had the like, gradually increasing stack of cars 
behind him. Uh, the erstwhile leader in SP10, the Porsche of Schmickler performance, the 165, Claudius Karsch out of that car after this crash, and that car being craned away at Teagarten. We're back to green on that. Meantime, the Cup 2 battle goes across the line and down towards the first corner. And that is still the Avia machine leading. And who's it behind it still? Is it still Mulner? Yes, it is. Also right in the mix there, Keir Kramer. So the blue and white car is the 122 in second place in class. Ahead of them, uh, they have got the SP9 Lion Speed car that's just come through. And again, going back a moment or two ago to the leader, right in behind, and in fact, giving a little love tap to one of the Caymans on the run down to the bridge at Adenar. Now, you've got to be careful doing that. There's all kinds of bits and pieces in the front of Porsches that you don't want to be bending and breaking. Yeah, There's quite a lot of water-related stuff around that end, isn't there? Water and oil, yes. Not a good mix. Not with tyres just behind not. either. Now, earlier on, I mentioned that uh, Joshua Bednarski had had an 85-second penalty and two penalty points. Um, quite clearly, the team have been talking to race management. And they've had another look at it, and fair play to them. They've withdrawn it and cancelled that penalty. So whether that was some new evidence from on board or whatever... I, I do like it um, when race control are prepared to say, yeah, all right, we'll have, we'll have a look at it, and we've had a look at it, and OK, we'll go. When we we put our hands up, we're not frightened to say that we made an error there. We've dismissed it. You will not have to serve that penalty, and more important for Josh, he, he doesn't get the penalty points on his licence. Right, more pit stoppers. Uh, fourth, fifth and sixth in... Um, Actually, they were second and third, weren't they? Second, weren't they? Second, weren't they? Yeah, they were second, second yeah. third and fourth, yes. Uh, Robert Renard, Chad Govin and Danny Hunkathea. But Piccariello left out and goes around to complete what will be his 15th lap. I reckon he can do two more laps. Renard, that's only a seven-lap stint to him. Chan Govin, only a six-lap stint. Um, I wonder if they're... Shortening up the stints now, just to make the pit stop shorter. Uh, what was... Danny was a seven-lap stint. So, Hunkadea out of that car. Oh, and they're working down in the footwell of the number four AMG team Bill Stein car. Now, that's interesting, John, because for, for, for safety reasons these days, the the seats are actually fixed in the cars. There are no, no yes. rails, no just It's a pedal box that moves back and forward, uh, depending on, on your driver height. So I just wonder if, you know, just thinking there, horribly, that the pedal box may be the, you know, almost the ratchet or whatever the system, locking system, had moved and it was pushing away. That's not ideal for driving, is it? No. Um, it's fixed. New driver is in. Um, and the mechanic did that very tidily. Some of them have got an electric motor on them. Some of them just move with a lever, as Peter said. Steering columns tend to move as well nowadays on racing cars, even sliding in and out. Of course, you do have seat inserts as well to try and get the drivers to as close to the same spot as they can, but things like differing inside leg measurements will make a different on pedal box. Three cars across the line. And as they head down towards the first corner, it's Raginger, Vavish and Vanter going through and Chris Mace is in there as well. Side by side for number 15, Audi. Just uh, getting slightly nerfed out of the way. Oh, Raginger having to lock right up there. Vavish 
with the position, holds on to third position, ragging at Van To. Chris Pace, as I say, in there as well in the 16. Marvellous stuff for what is effectively at the moment third, fourth and fifth position. And the BMW goes the long way around down at the Goodyear hairpin at the bottom of the Grand Prix circuit, trying to square off the exit, but drops his left-hand side tyres into the dirt. Doesn't seem to slow him down up to the Michael Schumacher left-right S. And behind them, there's another pair of cars having a scrap as well as Chris Meese is looking at the back of the Porsche. Doesn't try to go through there. So these four cars, Pete, are third on down. And Raffaele Marciello is only another two seconds behind uh, in the Rover Racing BMW. In fact, he's almost on the back of that. He's not two seconds now. We're going to have five cars carving their way. No, actually, hey, let's talk about six cars because the Conrad Motorsport Lamborghini Huracan, the number seven, is right there as well. This is a really good run for them if they can hold on to this performance. And driving that car at the moment, and driving it very well indeed, is, who is it? Oh, it's Vermeulen behind the wheel. So I reckon we're gonna have six cars carving their way through traffic. Brilliant stuff. Uh, this from Nico Menzel out of the 44. Falcon car. Stint was good, he said, some code 60s, a lot of rattling around. But our car felt good. I think what he means there is going slowly and um, not at speed. Car felt good, we were lucky with the yellows. Let's see where we are now. Well, where you are now is in fifth position with one pit stop to do. The leading two cars have not yet made their second pit stop. Uh, and neither has the Conrad car, I don't think. Maybe that's why it's so far up. Yes, that's correct. Um, so that they'll be in shortly. John, you that's mentioned the... Um, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, you, you mentioned the um, the drafting up to Schwedenkreutz uh, today. A couple of things happened. And uh, Peter Kate, thank you, Peter, has joined in. Um, the huge, huge experience, uh, intimate knowledge of uh, the Nürburgring and the Nordschleife. Uh, and he said that there's a, the drafting of the Sweden coach is strong today due to a northwesterly headwind there. Got you. Um, so th th there's an app he's working on his phone, isn't he? <laughs> Very good. Uh, it's important, though, isn't it? Um, that you, you follow these things around. Every little helps. Is that Thierry Vermeulen who's in that car? Um, he drove for Lion Speed last year. Um, I don't think I remember him driving for Conrad um, before. And he's not on the entry list. Um, which uh, a, a number of teams added um, drivers for today or only put drivers for today on and added drivers yesterday. and Alex for Munin as well but I think he's just a young carter I was talking to somebody about him the other day yeah <laughs> so well inside the second half of the race now coming up to a quarter past three in the afternoon we've got an hour and 46, 47 minutes remaining. Uh, the computer, I think, will be settling now on 20... Oh, no, it's gone back to 27. Um, however, we have been... We have had a code 60 now for well over an hour at one part of the track or another. And we've still got the carousel and the carousel exit there as well. That is slowing the lap times even at the front of the field. Uh, they've come down about another five seconds. Oh, we had a 49 last time around, actually, by Arjun Miney 
It started at just over nine minutes, then dropped to about nine, then it was an 8.55. So we're gradually clearing bits, bits and pieces of the track and all drivers are braking later and accelerating earlier. The questions about the Ferrari, Daniel Calvitz back in the car and he's in 15th position at the moment, just ahead of Lucas Stoltz in the Mercedes. And just ahead of them is the Herbert Motorsport number five car with Vincent Kolb driving. Ferrari going for it. This is Brave coming up the hill from Bergwerk. The third of the three left-handers, which is a bit tighter. Aston Martin with a problem on the Dottigahoa, the most expensive lawnmower you've ever seen, <laughs> as uh, it's kicking up a lot of dust. This is Harry Rice for the Fast Lane Racing 177. And no, bet that's he's overheating. definitely been on the grass. Yeah, he's got a left. No, I was going to say he's got a left rear tyre down he there. He has. Yeah, you have right. He has, slope. Yeah. Yeah, very, yeah, very soft. Not completely gone yet, but it's a good spot, John. But uh, I think that must be overheating as well, because the amount of grass and that air intake won't do it any good at all. We've got oil coolers down that end as well, not, to, not just water radiators. The good news is that uh, if they've got any goats out of the back, um, there's something for them to eat. Oh, John, just, realized, just as it came into the pits, I noticed the, the driver's side mirror on the left-hand side is clicked in, so he's okay. kissed the barrier there that somewhere, hasn't he? Right, OK. Um, into the pit lane for Alessio Piccariello, out of the lead for Falcon. Um, meantime, keep an eye on the number 650. Uh, that is the BMW M 240i Racing Cup. They are leading, this is the adrenaline car, they're in 65th at the moment and leading their class. That was the other car who'd won all three of the previous races. If they can get a decent result today, they don't even need to win that class with the problems uh, that we've had for the 165 uh, in the GT4 category, the SP10 category. Um, they could be leading on their own by the end of uh, by the end of today in the NLS standings, and I'm hearing now it was the Belloff S area uh, for Harry in that Aston Martin. So the 177 with an off-track incident and some touch of the barrier in the Belloff S area. That's coming down after Flans Garden, isn't it? Yeah, not, not a place you want to go off, really. Oh, no, fast, fast, fastly fast, fast. Right, let's get back to the battles in SP9 as the Rover BMW comes back onto the Grand Prix circuit. And that is the 98 car, scored in seventh but we'll make, be making up positions here because of the pit stops for the two leaders. Uh, and in fact, that is now the leading car. So, scored now as the leader. BMW leads at the Nordschleifer. It's the first time this weekend we've had a BMW at the front of the field. Rover Racing, Dries Vantor, Fred Vervich behind it for Share of Sport, then Falcon, BMW, Audi, Porsche, Audi, BMW, and Mercedes in the top six with Team Get Speed and Maro Engel. Just quietly, that number 130 car, they didn't tear up the tarmac in uh, the top qualifying, but they're there, and with one pit stop to go, they're in with a shout here. Well, as we said yesterday about another sport, didn't we, John, that you follow passionately? I think it was Tiffany Dell that made the comment yesterday on, on Twitter that uh, uh, it's not over until it's over. Yeah, very late winner at St Mary's for Southampton from a corner. And Tiff, like me, never walks out before 
the final whistle of a football match. Well, why would you? Yes, I, I know. <laughs> that, 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 I know. I'm, I'm not a football fan, but I said, why would you? You're there to see it. It's not over until the whistle's gone, surely. It's like, it's like walking out half a lap before the end of a checkered flag, isn't it? <laughs> Don't get it. No. Uh, besides which, normally you've paid your money. You might as well stay to the bitter <laughs> end, even if it, even if it looks like you're getting beaten. Well, very pragmatic approach, but quite right. Yes. It was the drive shaft on the beetle, um, oh. so they knocked that out, and they have changed it. And uh, that car, as we mentioned, is back out. Roller Dash was driving the car the last time I noticed. This is test kilometres for the car. Say the team. Um, the number 11 now um, I think has been retired uh, let me see yeah uh, Gunter Aber team manager said we've tried to repair the water leak after the collision with the Ferrari um, but we still have to work out why the car was slow uh, the second pit stop for the Lamborghini from Conrad Motorsport in the pit lane. Uh, then Marcel, Mark, he said, couldn't break. Then the engine was fine, then it wasn't. Um, so they've decided to pull the car before they damage the engine. Um, we'll take the car to bits and hope for better luck in the 24 hour race. Go and have a schnitzel, lads. Can't be unhappy after a good schnitzel, I reckon. I wonder if they get, do you think they get a free pass at, the, at their sponsor's restaurants? There isn't one close to the Nordschleifer though, that, that is the thing, They're, they are a, a chain of restaurants, but there's not one close to, close to the, uh, the Nordschleifer. I bet, I bet Klaus Ablin doesn't get a free pass. Mm, no, no, no. <laughs> he's, he's a different meaty <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Which are delicious, by the way. Frickadelli, the brand name. It's right, the rival carnival. Yes, indeed. Uh, at the Battle Forge, just off the podium at the moment. Um, well, last place on the podium, actually. Martin ragging it. Very much a, a ring expert. Um, when it rains, Martin ragging it is one of the very, very best. Uh, Franz Conrad down in the pit lane uh, at the moment as well, about to be interviewed. Just uh, got all the way up into the top 10 now, but that number seven car dropped outside the top 20, having had its pit stop. Danny Sufi is in the car at the moment. Uh, they've only got one more pit stop to make, like everyone else ahead of them, but they went really long on that uh, on that second run. Well done them. That's what uh, put them in the, the top. Um, now I've now got a workout with 11 laps to go. Um, Van Tor's on his fourth lap out of the pits. So, and we're still running at just under nine minutes, eight minutes 50, with still the carousel and Flansgarten, um, slow zones, Style Strecker, Brunchen 2, just being added to the yellow flag zones of Flansgarten. And <laughs> little love tap from Chris Mees to the back of the Porsche of Martin Raginger. Oh, so quick. As they have traffic ahead of them now. As they're breaking for the right-hander at the base of the Caracciola carousel, I think. Is that where they are? Yes, it is. Which now just gone to green, by the way, John. Finally. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, OK, so lap times are going to come down markedly. Is that Fred Vavich right in front of them? Um, how far up the road is Vavich? No, he's there. That's this other share of sport yeah. car. I couldn't actually see it in front of the Porsche because Raginger was that close to it. So there's three cars within half a second there as they're... Going through traffic, Vavish has just pulled out a few cars lengths. So now I can ID that car and confirm it is the number 15 Share of Sport Phoenix car. Uh, and then it's ragging in the Falcon 44. Then Chris Meese in the second of the Share of Sports car. Two seconds further back, the Rover Racing BMW number 98. 
Uh, and Vanftor's not that far off the road either. So the top six, uh, top five at least, are within three seconds of each other on the far side of the Nordschleifer. So starting to get very interesting. Very interesting. And one more pit stop to go. Who has got the calculations right? That's the question. Now, remember, there, be, there is a point whereby um, you stop using the table for um, laps completed and go to the table to minutes to go. And that's not a million miles away. It's about 15, 20 minutes away, I reckon that. So, you know, that's three laps away. Oh! Almost a huge accident there as the cars came into the slow zone with track vehicles on the left-hand side and Chris Meeks unsighted by the cars ahead of him. Jinked to the left and that is where the track vehicles were and he very nearly cleaned up the Falcon Porsche that was through Flans Garden, a very quick part of the track as they came up, up over the top of the rise there. They're coming back on the Dottinger Hall, we'll get a better look at them as they come back towards the start-finish line. And that little group of top five are all on the Dottinger Hall together. Rover Racing BMW leading for Dries Vanto. Let's call it um, no more than 10 cars lengths back to Fred Vervish in the share a sport car with the red accents then about the same gap back to martin ragginger for falcon and then right up his tailpipes chris meese in the second of the share of sport cars with the yellow and blue accents and then there's a little gap back to rafa marciello in fifth position but ultimately they are all together and they are all on a very similar pit stop strategy ragginger actually is and Marciello are the two cars that are most recently out of the pit lane. Just saw one of the AT cars there. That was the uh, Greaserman Toyota diving into the pit lane and going to a different spot for its fuel because the alternatively fueled cars have a different method of refueling, and that's done not in the pit lane. If you're watching the World TV stream and saw that diving off to the right of the pit lane and thinking, oh, he's gone behind the wall. Yes, he has, but he's only getting his AT, his alternative fuel. So the question now, Peter, is, first of all, which one of these five are going to come out on top? And secondly, have they got it right? Or from six on down, who are running a slightly different pit stop strategy, have they got it right? And I honestly don't know the answer. I I'm looking at the Mantai car. I'm looking at the Mantai car. They are only one lap into their current stint. Now, they're down in eighth position and a minute away. But we saw a minute turn over, in fact, more than that, turn over yesterday in the last stop, didn't we? Because the car that was behind came out with a minute's lead. So that can be turned over on the pit stop cycle. I think in about 45, 50 minutes from now, we'll have more of an idea. Yeah. As it'll They're stop, all going to go in, inside the last hour before they make yeah. that last pit stop. Of and that, course, that's yeah. not just being the obvious as in, because it's so close to the end of the race, that's right, I should explain that a bit more. As in, I think it'll pan out a bit more, we'll get to see what people are doing. Plus, we've now got that lack of code 60 so much, so the strategy can change again, and that has affected this race, or the strategies struck this job enormously in this race. Uh, so I think what they'll be doing is, in that time, they'll be rethinking it, and that won't become self-evident. Oh, a bit of, bit of grass there for the moment, grass moment for the Rover BMW going down through the hats and back. I think just going, missing a battle. Later. But, yeah, just just having to run a little bit wide, just pick a bit of dust. It is fairly good, it's beautifully dry. That's one thing that hasn't changed in this race. The weather, as you said, John, is, is 
almost perfect racing condition. It hasn't changed. But again, one of the Audis there at the back of the Falcon car down the Hatton back. I talk about that strip of grass there. As it goes over the bridge at the end of the Hatton back, that strip of grass disappears. And it is a barrier. It is literally the tiniest ribbon. So there is no room to be running down the grass there because there's just absolutely no no room for error there. And the Audi getting very, very close. Is that, is that Stippler at the wheel at the moment? Uh, no, it's uh, Chris Mason. It is Chris Mason, that. Yeah. Talk about talk about uh, uh, tightrope without a safety net there. Uh, another penalty for disregarding code 60. Uh, that's a 115 second hold. And another DMSB point for the driver of the number 930 Club Sport GT4. Sure which driver that was though. Um, also a 45 second time penalty for the BMW 325i, the number 747. Um, not really a jumbo penalty there, I can't make that joke on that one, so we'll gloss over and save that one. <laughs> Uh, and also the Audi RS3, uh, described as a, a limousine, but it just means it's got the boot on it. I noticed that in the entry list. 8.09, 75 second time penalty, and the driver will pick up a penalty point there as well. So Vantor leads by a scant second or so for Rover Racing. Dries from Fred Verviche in the Shearer Sport, Audi in second. And there's only one yellow flag, one slow zone and one code 60 zone and it's all at Flansgard at the moment so towards the end of the lap and they've passed it the last time around so they know exactly where that is the top five eight seconds between them, the top four, three seconds between them I'm just trying to see as well whether Maro Engel is closing in uh, on these guys and I don't think he is at the moment no he's not it's about holding station. Lost a couple of seconds at the start of the lap, but that could easily be traffic. Half past three, Central European summertime, an hour and a half to go. Just let these guys come back towards us a little bit more before I give you an update on the, the class leaders. Uh, shouldn't be anybody in from the lead groups uh, at the end of this lap. So give me a chance. Glickenhaus still lead SPX in 16th position. Milner Motorsports head cup two now. Uh, well inside the top 30. Their number 122 car uh, is ahead of the Avia WS Motorsport car, the 120. And K Kramer racing another couple of seconds behind. But they're all within sort of three or four seconds. Uh, the top three in cup two. 24th on down. Uh, in 36, it's the Avia 962. That's the Cup 3 GT4 version, if you will, of the Cayman. TCR inside the top 40 still for the Hyundai number 830, same as it ever was. Dua Motorsport leads the SP40 GT4 ranks with their Aston Martin. They're in 42nd position, 46th position is the Toyo Tires with Ring Racing SP10 leader. Oh, there is the battle for the lead in... Uh, no, that's for second place, my apologies, in Cup 2. And that's just changed because the Kirkema Racing car has just gone through. That's the 121, the golden black car. So just when we were talking about it, uh, directly, thank you very much indeed, put it up on the screen in front of me uh, as I just mentioned that. Uh, it's Chris Brook. He's driving the K Kramer car and he's just gone past the number 120 of Daniel uh, Blickle, or Blickle, actually, from Germany, from Abstadt. So a little bit of a gap between those two to the leader in class, which is the blue and white car. I shall continue. Uh, where did we get to? The Toyo Tires with Ring Racing 171 leading SP10, didn't we? Uh, and that is the Toyota Supra to uh, Takayuki Kinoshita, Michael Tishner, and Heiko Tongas. Um, and behind them, 
and in position 58 is the Matt Tricer Racing Triple Three now leading the Class AT. That's the um, well, that's the Porsche rather than the Supra that was leading that earlier on. So that is a change since the last time I mentioned it, I think. Um, in SP7, it's the Plus 9 Racing Team number 80 car. They've been leading since the start. BMW M240, 64th overall for the 650 Adrenaline Motorsport Team. VT2 Rear Wheel Drive, also Adrenaline, the 500 winners from yesterday. They're in 69th, two places ahead of their team car. The 396 leading V6. Schmickler ahead of the SP3T. Class in 75th position with their 319. Team Merck still leading VT2 front wheel drive with the 492 car. It's still the 446 and the 702, respectively, in 81st and 83rd for V5 and V4. Hoffer racing by Bonk leading the uh, BMW class with the 96th position, 885. Dome Motorsport leading in SP11 in 99th, and it's still the Beetle leading in SP14. That's how it stands with an hour and 25 to go side by side onto the Grand Prix circuit. And there's a bit of bodywork there. It's Rover Racing BMW and Fred Vavish. This is for the lead of the race. And the Audi goes down the inside, manages to get it just about done at the Ravenel curve down towards the right-hander dropping down towards the bottom of the Grand Prix circuit and opportunist manoeuvre possibly through traffic but the BMW coming back and Dries Vanter looks to the outside he's going to try and square off the corner diamond it off and get up the hill now the last time he tried this he put two wheels into the dirt doesn't do that this time but he hasn't closed down the gap to the left right of the Michael Schumacher S and there's one two three four cars then it's beginning to open up between the Audi lots of traffic ahead as well so a change in lead and now Vavish leads that's another different car and manufacturer combination to lead today pretty much everybody has had a go at some stage and three or four different Porsches at one point through the early part of the race it was almost like it was a traction thing John because Van Tour had the had the lead coming across the line by what was it uh, half a second uh, and they got into the the, um, the first bit that that right left and it just it just seemed to the Audi got alongside but only just and I didn't think he was going to pull it off and just seemed no. to get the traction pulled away and as you said by the time they got down to the, the, the bottom end of the loop there it was it was suddenly two car lengths which was unexpected and he, he hasn't been able to respond uh, uh, Van Tor in, in the BMW which is uh, not now now they're up against uh, some GT4 now he's now he's in touch that's about now this gives Van Tor the opportunity because he's suddenly all over the back of that Audi because of the GT4 Aston in front. Can he maximise on it? Can he take advantage of it? No, he's got to stay. No. Yeah, he's got to stay as close as he can, hasn't he, to have any ch chances. Two Aston Martins uh, running in fairly close proximity to each other, and uh, I'll keep an eye on the splits as they come through. 17 laps completed by the leaders and at the line or at the last split actually it was uh, a tenth of a second for Fred Vavish against uh, Dries Vanto then Martin Ragging is about four seconds back so that leading set of cars have just opened up a bit there's still only six seconds between the top five let's be quite blunt about this this is nice and close and looking down still to that uh, cup two battle from 24th on down Muller, K. Kramer Avia, Black Falcon that's your top four where's the Glicken house inside the top 20 car that hasn't uh, hasn't really delivered this weekend as I thought it would is uh, the, the, not just because it's the Aston but the, the driver lineup in that number 34 Vulcan Hall's uh, Aston is stellar but they just don't be able to convert that experience and talent into a uh, particularly good position they were running what the fourth in top qualifying 
Uh, who was? The 34 Vulcan Horst Aston. Uh, yeah, fourth or fifth, yeah. Fourth, fifth, yeah. So it was it was up at the pointy end, as you would say, but just just hasn't tra hasn't translated into into race pace, has it for them for whatever reasons? I'm sure uh, our man on the ground, Mr. Pittard, will, will tell us why. I'm not sure which which chapter of the uh, driver's book of excuses it will be. No no offence to David, but uh, it just has just hasn't translated, which is, is a surprise. through the very standard looking other than the paint work it always uh, always surprises me how stock some of these cars look other than perhaps a uh, fixed rear spoiler where it would be a pop up one um, I think that's the that was a fast lane racing Porsche came in the 446, I think, that was just going across the multicoloured car. Uh, meantime, who's this in the pit lane? This one of the GT tyres BMWs, is it not? 147. And they're watching their pit time. And uh, this car in the uh, SP8T class. Andrea Simon, Gregoire Boutonnet, and Ulrich Schmidt, Swiss, German, French driver lineup for GT Tire Motorsport by WS Racing. And that, that will be running GT Tires as well. Thumbs up from the driver. Car getting ready to go. I suspect that's leading a class at the moment. Just have a check. No, actually, it isn't. Let's see if we can find them on the uh, timing and scoring. What did I say they were? SP8T. Rolling out. Nice, sedate getaway. Uh, SP8T. 84th, are they? So, right, well, well uh, that's well. Actually, that's good news if that is the case. Yeah. Because one four seven. Yes. Mean, yeah. Yeah. Eighty four. That means that the uh, that Jimmy's car, now with Manuel Metzger behind the wheel, uh, is up to fourth in class, in 59th position. Their team built down by Black Falcon, and. They are chasing down the 163 Cayman, which is, they're on the same lap, so anything is possible. SP8 team, uh, fastest lap of the race has just been put in by Ali Sandberg for Door Motorsport in 41st position at 8.55.111. So again, ah, and we've got a clear track. So we have a completely clear track with a, an hour and 18 minutes remaining. No yellow flags, no slow zones, no code 60s. Finally. <laughs> yes, now let's see those lap times coming down. Uh, 8.20 for Raffaele Marciello is that car's fastest lap of the race. 8.19 last time around for Cher Sport, Fred Favrich in the lead. So let's watch these, uh, watch these lap times come down. Yeah, Muller's, Muller's done an 8.15 earlier on as well. But in his last lap. I see the lap times tumble now. No doubt. So where are we? An hour and 18. Let's see who's the next stoppers are and where the tactics are coming in. Uh, Vavich has got three more laps if he does an eight-lap stint. I don't think that car's done an eight-lap stint during this race. But that may be as much tactical as anything else. Vanto potentially could have, uh, well, two more after the ones they're on. Raginger is only on his fifth lap of his stint. Chris Meese is on his sixth. Marcello is on his fifth. Maro Engel on his sixth. Charles Vets in the 72 BMW, the Shell Helix car on his fifth. Manti priming only on his fourth lap. There goes Vanto onto another lap. 
So now he's on to his seventh. And at the line, the lead is half a second. A second and a half back to third. Three quarters of a second back to fourth. Top four within two and a half seconds. BMW, Audi, Porsche, Audi. Rover Racing BMW, the yellow, black and white car on the Grand Prix circuit now. The Audi sitting two or three cars lengths behind is the second place car of Share of Sport. Uh, two slightly different liveries for the Share of Sport cars. Blue with the red accents around the grille for the number 15. And blue with yellow for the 16 car, which is not that far behind. There's a Porsche in between them. It's going past the Toyota... GR Supra. Fascinating, this, Peter. I know there'll be people out there that say, oh, four hours is not an endurance race. Four laps around the Nürburgring is an endurance <laughs> race, as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. But actually, the way this has played, has played out um, and the unique circumstances in which we do things like barrier repair at the Nürburgring, that's played into it as well. Of course it has, where people have hit yellow flags, etc., on such a long circuit. But... I don't know. I honestly don't know. And I'm still looking at that number 911 in seventh place. Um, 53 seconds away from the leader now. Uh, they were a little bit more than that before. I think anybody who's within a minute of the lead still in with a chance. And within a minute of the lead just is 10th place. The Falcon Motorsports number 33. And we we know that those Falcon cars are very quick. Um, we're coming round to quarter to four in the afternoon which was forecast for when we'd have the highest temperature we've had a little bit of uh, cloud for most of the afternoon but 16 was the top temperature at about this time of day it's still a little bit cooler than it was at its hottest yesterday but let's see whose cars come to life in the last the last hour of the race which is 14 minutes away now yeah, so what I, I said tonight, I'd reckon about 45, 50 minutes to go, we'd, we'd have a, yeah. a, a much stronger view at that. Uh, Thomas Prining in Grello, the 911 uh, numbered yeah. Porsche, is, I think, the, am I right, he's the fastest car it's set so far, 8.14.055. Uh, yes, that was set much earlier on. Yeah, exactly, yeah, that, yes, was, that, that yeah. is the fastest lap of the race so far, but... Uh, you, you can't discount that. You can't discount them at all. I'm still intrigued to see how this, and the, uh, what as to why they've done it and how it pans out. These, the two Falcon cars yesterday, they split their strategy. As we said, one did five laps, then six laps. This today, they've done a five lap and a seven lap, and that's. Yeah. I think that's a, a conscious decision to have done that. I just, are, are they just trying? As we said earlier on the show, John, is it is it data collection gathering up? Let's try something slightly different to yesterday and just see how that pans out. But there's so many permutations come in. We didn't know you're going to have such a long code 60 for that barrier pair at, at Carousel, and that, that changes the whole game. So it's uh, I'm sure they've run all sorts of algorithms and things, how this could work with permutations, but um, it, it's not it's not on the back of an envelope, is it? You don't get to win these races by doing it with a, a pen in the back of the envelope. Well, if you have to, you, I suppose. <laughs> well, if you, if, if you just ought to, yes, we've got no other option it, when, it the, when the power fails. Well. It worked for Paul Trussfeld for years at Le Mans. He still True. had most of his exercise boots that he used to lap chart the whole race in. Amazing stuff. Um, he is assisted by algorithms and computer nowadays in his uh, st team strategist role that he has uh, taken on. May well have uh, just become a associate member of BRDC as well, hasn't he? Yeah, great to see that. Absolutely lovely to, to see that and well-deserved for all the hard work he's put in in uh, British motorsport and with BRDC members down through the years. There was a couple of uh, good appointments uh, there. I noticed in the latest intake of the associate members of the, the BRDC, people from uh, perhaps more behind the scenes um, than the, the more obvious drivers, etc. Um, and it's nice to see the BRDC uh, recognising not as full members, but as a, a associate members, it's nice to see that going on. Um, let me just tell you that Rafa Marciello and Mauro Engel have just put their cars fastest laps of the race in 8.17.8 for the Mercedes of Rafa and the uh, for the BMW of Rafa and 8.19.1 for the Mercedes of Engel. Is that the fastest Mercedes then? No, it's not. Uh, 
the Bilstein car. No, that, no, that is the fastest Mercedes. So the fastest Mercedes is five seconds off the fastest time from the Porsche. Isn't that interesting? Very interesting. Um, different conditions and set at different times of the race, but even so, uh, our Mercedes playing the BOP game. Patrick Cole behind the wheel of the Lion Speed GT3R. And that car sitting in 22nd position in class. They've got one stop to make. And was that the fastest lap for them last time around? Yes, it was. Patrick put that car's fastest lap of the racing last time around of an 8.23. Stunning colourway on that line speed car. Multiple entries in multiple series. They were out in a GT4 car at Mugello a couple of three weekends ago. Under the line speed banner in uh, the Creventic series. Uh, out last weekend at Ricard with the GT3 car. In a huge field of uh, SRR GT3 Europe racing there's a more than a little bit of uh, it's a lion's head down the side but there's more than a bit of flying lizards about that and there's nothing wrong in that at all actually we'll have Darren Law on Midweek Motorsport on Wednesday as the flying lizards are coming back to the IMSA paddock at the top level fielding an Aston Martin on the streets of Long Beach which is our Coverage for you next weekend on Friday and Saturday as part of a very busy weekend of endurance motor racing, which includes uh, Krevetnik Racing at Spa and uh, also the next round of the FIA World Endurance Championship in Italy at Imola. All covered for you live and free on the Radio Show Limited network of audio and visual channels. So um, start planning now. It's not an awful lot of overlap, so with a, a clear brain, a bit of forward planning, and a lack of requirement for sleep, you can probably take all of them <laughs> pretty much. Maybe need a second screen for one of them. Right, coming to the end of the lap. Vanto, Vavish, ragging it. Mies, Marcello. All coming across the line now and into the pit lane for the Dacia with an hour and eight minutes to go. This will be their last pit stop. They open the boot lid to refill. Kriza and Jachmeyer. This is the battle for the lead going on the Grand Prix circuit again with Rover Racing's BMW. Now, this time the Audi gets a better punch out of that first S. It's not that far back to the Falcon Motorsports car. Oh, Falcon Motorsports car has lost a position. Chris Meese has gone through. That is the Audi now in third position. So that's a change. Chris Meese has gone by Martin Ragginger. Confirmed now on the timing screen at the next split. So it's BMW, Audi, Audi, Porsche, BMW, Mercedes for your top six. And... Interestingly, Peter, with the removal of those slow zones, I'm now seeing 28 laps predicted for the first time to the end of the race. Wow. So that, that leaves us with eight laps to go. Um, the leaders are on their eighth lap, and therefore they will have to stop this time around. The top three will all be stopping this time around. Ragingham might be able to go one lap further. At this pace, if we continue at this pace and it goes to 29 laps, that means the leading three cars can't get to the end on one more stop. And that will come down to when time runs out. So this, this is now becoming a far more interesting strategic game. So, Top three have to stop at the end of this lap. Ragginger can go one more. Marcello can go one more. Engel can go. No, he's got to stop. 
Prining can go three more at the end. That's uh, <laughs> two more, two more at the end of this lap. Interesting. Yeah. Very Man interesting. Mantai ever again. And maybe they've read that well, exactly right. That, those those um, uh, Code Sixes and uh, ever tiny bit just combine them. That actually was an hour and fifty minutes. Would you believe, John? Yeah. No, I do. Yeah. I, do, I, I believe that. That's half the race, isn't it? Yeah. Now. The two leaders on course have been asked to go to the clerk of the course. This is major drama. I have no further message than that. 15, about uh, a minute ago, the number 15, followed by a minute later, so just gone, the 48. There's a number of other cars who are under investigation, you mean the we don't get anything more than that. So 44 and 15, who have been leading the race, now second and fourth in that leading group, have been asked to go back to the clerk of the course. And there's a change in Cup 2, because that looks to me as though Gabriele Di Martino has got ahead of Merlin Motorsport. See them at the next split. Keir Kramer, I think, ahead of Mulna, and Avi is still in third place with the Shea Bath driven car. So that's a change there. So is there going to be post race drama again? It was well over 45 minutes after the end of the race last night that the top three was changed. Second place car relegated to fifth, and everybody else moved up one. Chris Mace in fourth position, uh, in third position, in the number 16. I'm not questioning it for one minute, but I, I, I can't think what it is that they might have done to get the two to the two to be required to go there. Uh, I'm guessing it's <laughs> it's got to be yellow flag or something. Mind having said that, oh, the Haug Hook, the Haug Hacken has a yellow flag uh, on it. Now, a moment or two ago, the pass for third position was into the Haug Hook, turn one. Porsche runs a little bit wide. That's exactly what happened at the start of the race. And the Audi was able to pick its way around the outside and make that pass. So that had only just happened when I spotted it and didn't see how it happened, but just saw them coming down the hill behind the two leaders. So Chris Meese up in the third position. And again, that Porsche just running a bit long. That's exactly what happened at the start of the race, let's not forget. Yeah, just talking about those two, those uh, requests to go to the clock, of course, they're, they're half an hour apart as well, aren't they, John? Uh, the requests. We have a look. I have got um, an awful lot of no further action, so let me scroll down. Yes, 44. Uh, no, no, a minute apart. I've got them as a minute apart. Sorry, yes, it's seconds. 15. Sorry, yes, yes, my apologies. I've got 15 and 48, so my, my screen hasn't got the other bit on it there. Sorry, yes, I'm just seeing that bit as, as minutes, not seconds. Yeah, yeah so, so it, it, 30 it, it, seconds apart. Yeah, so it, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's why I was trying to think 30 minutes so, apart would be quite different, so but that's. It's the same part of the track, then. isn't it? Exactly. Well, That's uh, my well, point. Yeah. Even if it's nothing to do with the pair of them, another more fastest laps for various cars. The number fourteen Bilstein car, Lucas Stoltz, with an eight seventeen for that car, eight eighteen flat for the car behind, uh, which is the thirty four Valkenhorst uh, Aston Martin, and that's got. Uh, so what's that battle? That's the battle for 12th and uh, 13th well, Christian Krohn's, I position. Thought, Christian Krohn is behind the wheel of that car. Further down, there's all kinds of people putting in uh, faster slap now. The second place SPX car. the car that's running on the development tyre, but it is still the... Uh, Hanker competition car and it's uh, 
the Korean driver behind the wheel of that, and that is 8.46 for that car, uh, sitting in 31st position at the moment for Kim Yong. Kim Yong. Yunk. Or Kim Yong, as he's known. Thank you for the helps on pronunciation, those of you on Discord. <laughs> um, I'm now fascinated by, with an hour and one minute to go, it's dropped back down to 27 again. So I think, I don't think it's going to go to 29. 29 would be the problem for the cars in the lead. At 28, they're all right. At 27, sorry. Uh, they're all right. At 28, they're probably all right. So the top three will come in at the end of this lap. And at the end of this lap, they will have six or seven laps to go. Here they come. Dries Vanto, followed in by Chris Meese, who closes up, who fo is followed in by Fred Vavic, who closes up, uh, excuse me, is followed in by Chris Meese, Vanto, Vavic and Meese, all coming in together. And they will get fuel... Uh, a new set of tyres, and they will have enough to do eight laps. And I reckon it will be touch and go whether they have to do eight laps. It might only be seven. Oh, this is quality. So that was an eight-lap stint for these drivers, but we're inside the 70 minutes now, so this is pit stops timed on the table that looks from the end of the race backwards. Rafa Marchiello with another fastest lap of the race for the now second place 98 Rover racing car. 8.17, 8 for him. He will come in at the end of this lap, as will Martin Raginger for Falcon. Oh, this is now getting very interesting indeed. Marcello's transition from Mercedes to BMW doesn't seem to have uh, in, impaired him or slowed him down in any way, shape or form, has it? Not at all. Not at all. Unsurprisingly. He's, he's a class act, isn't, isn't he? Isn't he just? I mean, I know he's got a good reputation, but I still think he's actually underrated. Um, he's not a shouty driver in, in, in terms of, you know, what he does on social media or his driving style. He just gets the job done. He put some very, so, very funny posts on there. Yeah, on yeah. social media. I mean, there was that, that one that was a couple of years ago at the N24 when the, the Van Tour brothers got together. Oh, uh, yeah. If you remember, and Grello uh, came out of it all and went on to win, and he, he, he just, Raffaello, just put up a post just saying, man, I'd love to be at the Van Tour Christmas family dinner this year. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's just great. <laughs> I think the following weekend, Sunday lunch would have been interesting, to be honest. <laughs> I wonder if uh, in Belgium the... Friday night chippy tea with the family's a thing. I'm not sure, but that could have been awkward. Now, there's a phrase I haven't heard in a while, chippy tea. Ah, Kelvin van der Linde got out of the uh, Lamborghini Huracan. We're unlucky in a few code 60 phases, but everything's going according to plan. We would have had the pace to finish in the top six, though. I think we're quite well prepared. We still have to work on a few little things. Uh, Karsten Knechtes from the BMW RSR. We wanted to do another test, and that's why we started from the pit lane. We wanted to escape all the commotion at the start. We've undone a few settings from yesterday and tried other things. Unfortunately, we had a drive shaft issue on the third lap. It's been repaired. We're driving again. And actually, since the Subaru had its problem, we're actually in first place in class. Uh, Marek Bockman from the 17. Aston, this is the one that had the ABS problem. Uh, we went out to, get to see again to see if we'd fixed it, and it looked all right. But we've decided to park the car and analyse everything properly for safety reasons. And ABS fault is not something to be trifled with. If it comes back on at the wrong moment, it would be very dangerous for us and everyone around us. I think that's sensible. Not a good day for those two Falcon Horst uh, Astons. Not been a good weekend for them, has it? To be honest, but uh, you know that this point like ABS is it? Uh, you know, is it is it a sensor or is it something more? And it's not something you want to be risking with brakes, is it really? Uh, brilliant rut speed. Paul has said. Do you think it might have been the near miss with those course vehicles? 
when we went through, it was Flans Garden, wasn't it? You might be right. There's also been a bit of um, touching as well in some of the slow zones earlier. It seems a long time ago for that. I keep flicking back to my screen um, that has the, the messages from race control on because despite the fact that I've got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12, uh, various pages and screens open. I'm st I still can't have them open at all the same time. <laughs> <laughs> do, just, this is just, a race where you really do need all of that information, don't you? Yeah, just just thinking about it, just just on sort of normal format of how how this is run at the Nurburgring on the North Side, for instance, the, the you know with the mix of sort of a GPS and tracking and information that the, the race control and directors have, it's normally straight to a penalty. It's pretty well a decision done behind the scenes and the team is informed so being called to race control tends to air towards something that's a bit more complicated possibly from uh, speculating too much but it tends to, to the, but that goes back to a little bit of was there something a little bit early where it's almost right gentlemen come and state your case you see what I mean and, and I can't I can't see any other warnings for those cars no. earlier on Battle, it's, it's not one uh, again, job. yes Battle again between the Rover BMW and the Share of Sport Audi. Now, that was for the lead not so very long ago. Uh, they've dropped down now to 15th and 16th position, but they've done their uh, last pit stops, and they, in fact, are the first two to have completed their final pit stops. They're fueled and potentially have eight laps in the tank, and we think there uh, are only seven laps maximum to go possibly only six so what we're seeing again as yesterday is people going very deep into the last hour uh, and this is all good news of course um, for those people who are going late there are no yellow flags at the moment so they are at full speed there are no slow zones no code 60s they are going at full speed um, as is everybody else um, but it just means that right now, there, if the, if there was yellow flags and slow zones to come out, they can go to the end from here. Uh, they can, sorry, pit stop and go to the end after that. So everyone else would have to slow down, and that gives them a little bit of an advantage, making their last pit stop later. It may go green all the way to the end, and then they'll get the help from the pit stop minimum timetable that is counting back from the time from the. Uh, the checkered flag so they'll still make a shorter pit stop than those that pitted after their eight lap stints around about the hour mark more fastest laps coming in jordan pepper 8 15 7 that's that's the fastest lap we've seen for a long time that um from jordan pepper in the ab sport line lamborghinis in fourth position at the moment but still with the last stop to make so all of those guys are coming down to light fuel loads. 227 leading uh, the green and white. Uh, this is the AT Fuels class, by the way, I'm talking about leading for the Toyota Supra GR. Heading down into the first S, the hook. It's the 227 Visama car. I do you like the shape of those? Supra's platform share with BMW uh, Z4, of course, the new BMW Z4. And Toyota managing to stamp its identity onto that car. Right, now, leaders coming back towards us. I reckon they'll pit this lap. And there will be potentially five or six laps to go. Ragging in, this is the end of his eighth lap. He can't do another one. Let's see what it says. Ian McCarthy says, perhaps race control want to personally congratulate the two leaders on an excellent race so far. Brilliant entertainment regardless. <laughs> All right, first and second, coming into the pit lane, Porsche and Rover BMW, Ragginger and Marciello. Interestingly, Marciello tipped the pit lane speed uh, the pit lane sensor first there, <laughs> which is not how they came into the pit lane. Um, Ragging and peels off to the right. BMW going further down the pit lane. There'll be no hurry here. The trolleys will go underneath the car. That's absolutely standard. 
as the fuel is going in. The fuel going into the normal right-hand wing filler of that Porsche rather than in the bonnet. That's interesting. I think it is. New set of tyres being ready. Just come out with their tyre warmers, which are allowed here. They, they won't be rushing here. So, guess who's just gone into the lead, Peter? Grello? Yes, spot on. <laughs> and Thomas Prining will, if he wishes, be able to go another two laps. Now, we saw this work yesterday, the extra two laps that the Falcon car was out there was what turned things around. Now, they were a minute behind and closing in, actually. Priming was putting in some quick laps, so they were about 50 seconds, actually, behind the two leaders before the two leaders pitted. They've still got to do their pit stops. The worry for them is what's going on behind. How far ahead of the 33 are they? And the answer to that is only 20 seconds. So they won't get ahead. Oh, no, they haven't made that stop either. No. What you thinking that? They haven't, have they? No. Right, this is interesting. So what we've got to look at is the Kelvin van der Linde car. That's the first car that's made its pit stop. OK. Wait for that car to come through. Oh, this, this, this is, to me, with a green flag track, I think this is really interesting. 38th position down at the bottom of the hill for the GT number 146. That's the leader in SP8T. GTI at the GT Motorsport. That's Baitska Visser behind the wheel. Passed on the last lap last Sunday for the class lead by the 150 BMW. Uh, which currently is still running in fourth position. Huge gaggle of cars coming through. Final now out of the pit lane. And it is the 44s out ahead of the 98. They've switched round in the pit lane, have they? No. No, that's how they came in. Yeah, just. That is how they came in. Yeah. Only just though. So Only just, yeah. I did say, I said, did I say that to, to sort of 45 to 50 minutes from the end of the race, and we've got 48 yeah. minutes to go, that it would we'd really start to see how it started to work out. So the the top, what are the top nine have done two pit stops? Yeah, yeah. Raginger uh, is the first car that has has done his third. Pit yep. stop, I think. I'm just waiting yeah, to see. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right, John. Yeah. When everybody else comes around, but what I'm, uh, what, what's interesting to me is those cars who stopped earlier. Um, the Fonda Linda car. No, the Fonda Linda car should be ahead of him. Is he not? No, he's not. No, he's thirteen. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. It's thirteenth. So... Bragging, bragging is tenth, and Van der Linda's thirteenth at the moment. Right. Okay. Did they close in? They're twenty seconds behind, I reckon. All right. But well, it is a genuine race to the flag now. The two cars heading down to the Vidal chicane. The 44 Martin Ragger driven Falcon Motorsports car and the Maxime Martin just installed in the Rover Racing BMW. That is a genuine battle for what? Oh, yellow flags at the approach to Hats and back through Sabine Schmidt. And that's because we've got a BMW off to the left hand side. Oh, now, that's going to need recovering. Oh, you've... Yeah, it's just, it's just rolled to a halt by, by the tyre marks on the, to the, the in indents on the grass. It hasn't connected with anything. That's the adrenaline motorsport car again, isn't it? That was a class leader. Yeah, it was. 660, yeah. I think. Drivers out to the other um, side of the barrier, all relaxed. So I don't think there's been any impact with that. It's just got a mechanical uh, fault there, job. But more to the point, you say that's going to have to be recovered. It can't be left there on the handsome back. It was the 650 that was leading the class and still remains out on the track. So this might fall into the lap of Thomas Prining. Um, and, and certainly. 
Right, so and there we go. See, it's now very, very slow indeed. And we've got all kinds of cars getting caught up in that, including the Shell Helix BMW, the Abt Sportline Jordan Pepper Huracan. So this is this is now slowing those cars down. The leader, Prining, is past that and away. His last lap at 8.19. And I don't think he'd be slowed down that much. We've also got a car smoking as well on the hats and back. And it's been upgraded to a code 60. So Priding has to come in at the end of this lap anyway. So this is not so much a strategy call, but it's how quickly that gets cleared. Yeah, it's only, for one, could... only for one Marshall's poster, isn't it? It's uh, just as it goes through the Shabin Smitsko, it becomes a 120, then 60, then back to green, and literally consecutive Marshall posts 63, 64, and 65. 120, 60, and then clear in terms of uh, restrictions. So it's a very short uh, restriction there for them. Right. Whilst that is playing out, we're into the last 45 minutes. Let me quickly update you on the class leaders. Mantai leading will come in at the end at the end of this lap. Glickenhouse in 23rd leads SPX. Cup two, K Kramer racing uh, back at the head of that. Gabriela Di Martino ahead of the Mulder Motorsport, the Hofmeister driven car. And Avia in third, six, seven seconds between those top three. Still a crack battle in Cup two. TCR, Hyundai. Uh, and the 8.30, the car uh, in 36th position now. Avia leads in the Porsche Cayman Cup 3 class. And that is one of the cars in the pit lane, is it? Uh, the, the leading car is the uh, 9.62. No, that's the 9.69 that is in the pit lane. Uh, in uh, SP10, Pro Sports leading that with their 175 and 42nd. E-Fuel Team Greisemann, the 227 Toyota, leads in 55th position in AT. Plus Lime Racing Team leading in SP7 in 61st with their 80 car. Adrenaline lead the 240i class still with the 650 car in 63rd position. Their uh, 396 leads V6 in 67th and their 500 leads the VT2 rear wheel drive class in 69. Schmickler are leading SP3T with 319 and 74th position. 446 is leading in V5. Team Mertens are in 76th position. 74th, 75th, 76th, all class leaders there. Uh, the 492. V4, 731. Schultz behind the wheel of the V4 leader in 82nd. Hoffer Racing by Bonk leads the BMW class in 95th. The Door KTM is retired and sits in 104th position. And the Beetle is still running and leading SP40. It's number 13 car in 108th position. Uh, and that is how it stands with just on 43 minutes to go. With the leaders uh, working at the moment their 22nd lap of what we believe will be 27 laps. But it's tight between and it's back to 27, should I say. So it's back to 27. I don't think it'll go back up to 28, certainly with uh, slow zones out there. But this, it'll be 26 or 27, depending on the pace. But even with that slow zone, it's gone back up to 27. OK, let's see how it goes. Across the line, then, for the 33, which retakes the lead as the Manti car is right at the end of pit lane and hasn't started moving yet. Now, ideally, what Manti need now is for that slow zone to be lifted just as they're coming round to it. Forecast 16 Celsius, it's hit 16 Celsius at just after a quarter past four in the afternoon. Very pleasant afternoon in the Eiffel to be watching motor racing. Still waiting for the tyres to go on Grello. Waiting for Phil Ellis to come through in the team gets beat, number nine, Mercedes AMG. He should be the next car through as the Fricadelli. Daniel Kylevitz got up the third there in the Fricadelli Ferrari. They've gone about their job quietly this weekend. 
Uh, Lucas Stoltz also in the pit lane at the end of that lap, as we would have expected. So Phil Ellis has not done his last pit stop yet, though, has he? So he must have to come in next time around. Uh, yeah, Ellis, Lucas uh, uh, Dynamic GT and Herbeth all have to come in at the end of the next lap. Uh, the number three Bilstein car, Bilstein car, um, two laps before that car can, uh, needs to come in, should they so desire. Seems like so an agonisingly long stop for Grella, doesn't it? But we do know that the yeah, yeah. 33 Muller car still has a pit stop to come, but it just... Correct. It, I'm, I'm just sitting there thinking, watching that go by, as you said, and you're waiting for that green to clear, and thinking, can you go, can you go, can you go? But uh, it's it going to be... Yet. Uh, into the pit lane. Who came in there? Oh, the, the Herbert car came in, uh, as did Boost in the dynamic car. Out goes... Grello into what I reckon is third place unless Raginger just comes through. Uh, Raginger's just gone through and now uh, have they gone past? Yes, they have. Looking behind to see that should be Dennis Marshall and it is. So at the moment and I'm waiting for them to go through the first on the Grand Prix track. Uh, it's going to be Fulton 33, which owes us a pit stop. Salman Oega in the number three Bill Stein car owes us a pit stop. So I reckon Martin Ragging is leading again in the 44 car, effectively. Yeah, and he's just, uh, he's just ending that lap. He's, about, he's just gone through the, the Michael Schumacher. Yes, and he's just going up to the final chicane and about to join uh, Sabine schmidt and join the Nordschleife. That's where he is on track at the moment, John. Uh, Max Martin for Rover Racing will be in second. He's four seconds behind. Chan Guvan's been plugged back in uh, to the uh, Grello car. Has, has he driven the whole thing today? No, because... Um, uh, no, Thomas Prining just got out of it. Yeah, Prining just got out of it, yes. Sorry, I'm an yeah. idiot. He's just, got, he's just yeah. gone into it, yeah. He's, yeah, so that is three stints, though, for Guven today, because he double stinted at the start of the race, if memory serves. Um, so Chan's been given the go-ahead. Let's see where he is when he comes through the first of the uh, checkpoints. Two SP9 cars coming back towards us. One of the Get Speed cars. Uh, the black and red version of Get Speed. Coming up to the end of the lap now. That is uh, Chil Gunon, I think. And in behind him, is that the Audi? Is that the Jutta Racing car? I think it is. Coming in for their last pit stop. And down towards the first corner. <laughs> ah, no, it was the team Advan, the HRT Mercedes, uh, that was coming through, the six car, black and red, rather than the get speed version. So what we need to look at, I reckon, Peter, is the gap between the 911, the 98, which I reckon is second, and the 44. And I reckon that's about 15 seconds between what will become the top three. And then there's five or six seconds back to the second share of sport, Audi, and the Rover race, the second Rover racing car, the Dries, the uh, Kelvin van der Linde car in what is now seventh. That is, it's all getting a bit tight at the front of the field. And any little stumble um, a Sheldon van der Linde car, I should have said, the number 99. <laughs> 37 minutes remaining. Yeah, I was looking where our 
Uh, race leader is the Otis the Pit Stop, of course. This is the 33 Falcon uh, Porsche driven by uh, the Muller, and it's uh, just exiting the carousel, so it's into the, the, the latter stages of the, of the lap, as it were. Still With double yellows at the entrance to the hats and back. Sabina Schmidt's curve, code 60. There, have we still not got that car moved? Ah, is that, ah, now there is debris or fluid on the track, rubbish on the track. Something on the track that shouldn't be there, Flag, the yellow and red. Yeah, Usually that's out there for fluids, but it could be debris. Just like a piece of debris, just like, like a piece of, piece of something, of, it's not even a split off the front of that car, is it? It's an odd, odd bit of, because you know, I, I didn't think there was any, any contact, I think the car rolled to a halt, as I, as I said, and so don't think any contact with unless it just damaged the taking something off underneath it going over the grass, simple as that, a bit of under tray or, or something. Well, there's, yeah, there's, ah, lift. now, front left wheel is jinked hard to the left, ah, so that's may, right. maybe it did connect with the barriers then. Yeah. Yeah, it's being towed, but there's a lot of left lock on, which you wouldn't normally have as a driver being towed along uh, no. by a Unimog. <laughs> might be better to have a lift there. I'm not sure where they'll get that off the track. I think there's a, a cut out two corners away from where they are. Bizarrely, they would have been better off towing that backwards because the uh, the caster on the car would have straightened the wheel up. Yeah, self-straightened and self-centred, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. Don't ask me how I know that, but I know that it's six miles. Yeah. Um, you, you've you've, you've, seen, you've seen, it on different, seen it on different things, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a broken um, steering arm on a car. And my father decided it was a good idea to tour it across town. But obviously we had to do it backwards. Bless him. Um, Bless him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Raphael uh, Marcello's best tweet we were talking about. Uh, what a... Good lad he is. Um, always give 100%, unless you're giving blood, of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> very good. <laughs> very good. Love it. Uh, that came in from uh, Raining Monkfish. Hello, Woody. At Woody. Um, at RSL underscore studio. Hashtag RSL underscore N24. We'll keep that hashtag going through to the race as well. And... Special programming starting on Wednesday of race week with Midweek Motorsport live from the circuit. Here comes the leader into the pits. Full coverage of all the N24 sessions as well in that race week. So Sven is going to jump out. And here he comes. Nice and gently into the pit stop. It is the absolute antithesis of a Formula One stop, isn't it? And all the better for it as well. Well, um, I think so. Is that is that Backler gone back in it? Uh, let me have a look at the... Sorry, I didn't look uh, as he was getting in. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's Klaus. Thought I recognised the helmet, Aust yeah. Austrian helmet. Yeah. It's been close on the helm. So that just the two drivers have driven that today. Did Pia oh, no, Piccari Yellow did drive that car earlier, didn't it? Or did it? Was he in the other one? Was he in the 44? Uh, no, he's... Well, actually, the entry list at the moment is... Um, is helpful for the names of the cars, but the drivers have been swapped around so much yesterday and today. Um, Double-ended in various people. Luke Stoltz quoted as saying the stint was exciting. I had a great battle with the Ferrari. We had a lot of fun. This is in the number four AMG. Uh, I thought I'd got by a couple of times, but we're just a bit slow on the straight. It wasn't enough. Uh, the weekend's been a bit slow for us. We will have to. Uh, so John, just that, that, actually, you know, it was Picariello that got into the car. Right, well, the, that car, the 44 Falcon, has just crossed the line. Wow, that's much tighter than I was exactly. expecting. As, it, as its, its sister is just coming down the pit lane as well. So literally, it started moving in the pit lane as the, yeah. uh, as the 44 came into view. Yeah, that is Alessio Picariello, the Belgian. 
So Raginga from the BMW in second is Max Martin. Then Picariello under 10 seconds. Chan Guven another eight seconds further back. And then a second behind that is the number 15 of Dennis Marshall. Now, oh, problem for the number 16. This is a big issue for the share of sport car, going very slowly indeed. We are predicting three laps to go. And why is the 16 moving so slowly? It must, Ricardo Feller must have a problem, must have a puncture. He wasn't Just currently ninth, due isn't it? into the pit lane. He was fueled to the end. He's only been out for a couple of laps, so it can't be fuel issue. Is it left rear, Peter? God. Yes, it is. Yep. Yep. He's just jinking there. Although it was almost like he was trying to jink around. I think it's. I think is it the left rear down a bit? Has the suspension gone? I, I'm going to say. I think. I think exactly exactly the same. I think the suspension's gone. That's not a tyre. I don't think. We'll have a look in a second. It's into the pit lane now. So, a drama for the, the Sheeran car. The last minute. And it does. It doesn't look like a tyre issue, to me at this stage. It might be as it gets closer, but. We'll find out yeah, in a that moment. Looks like it's still, does that look like there's still air in that left rear? It does mm. a little bit. Uh, we've got a code 60 at Kinnebacker Hall. And, well, this is disaster for Cher Phoenix, who had such a good race yesterday, third and fourth. Salman Sufi and Ricardo Feller also stopping. Uh, uh, Sufi also stopping, rather. Feller is there. There's no, there's no urgency around that Ricardo fella getting no. out of the car. Yes, the tyre's inflated and it's uh, they've taken the, taken the rim straight off and kind of looked in. I think I think we're right on the suspension or drive shot or something's gone in uh, inner yeah, depth it's definitely of that not wheel the tire. arch. No, tyre's fine. I, 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 it's a hub or a control arm or something, but it, it wasn't wiggling. It just didn't look like it was in the right place, as if maybe a, maybe a shocker or something like that. Um, Toe link or something's just yeah. yeah Frank Stiffler having his a chat teammates. with him. So well, well it's gone into the garage forward, which tells you a lot. It's not coming out again in a hurry. That is it. I, I I'm almost I, I'm almost certain it was the suspension when I, as soon as I saw the tire that the wheeler was sitting down. Um, we're hearing that it might have happened at Flans Garden. My goodness me, if it did, that would have been a wake-up call for Ricardo Feller. That this car's gone very, very well. There is just a slight bit of damage in on the streaks of the diffuser on the left-hand side, as if it had hit the ground hard. Our leader is Martin Ragginger by, oh, nothing at all. Not even a tenth of a second from yeah. Max Martin now. Um, see the rear view mirror of the leading Porsche as he comes out of Adenar Force. Now, we've got a replay of the onboard from the Audi number 16 of Ricardo Fuller and he comes through to Flansgarden. Nice. I'm watching the steering wheel. Yeah, he's already Sorry, slowed, got... hasn't he? Yeah, and he's got a little bit of left hand down there, Pete. Something, something certainly happened. Yeah, he's felt, he's that felt would it, have been scary. It, yeah. That would have been scary. Wow. As you said, it would have, certainly would have got his attention, wouldn't it? That's flat out through there, Peter. Oh, no. That's absolutely flat out. That's incredible. He's, I mean, it stayed together. Uh, the wheel didn't come off. The tyre didn't have any grooves worn into it, so it wasn't rubbing anything when that car came off. So he's recognised that very quickly. I would say it's suspension or it may be a drive shaft failure as you mentioned but it's set definitely something mechanical on that left rear corner very very, very rare on an audi as well yes indeed very well developed car now 1.7 gap between ragginger and martin picariello another six seconds further back to one three again for Falcon, we saw this yesterday, and the car in third was exceptionally quick and has just put in the fastest sector five of the race. So Alessio Picariello 
been basically been slapped around with raw meat and had bad things said about his family. <laughs> he's got the red mist now. He's heading. He's heading back towards Max Martin, and took two and a half seconds out of him in sector five alone. So a good weekend for Falken. Chan Guven is another 15 seconds further back in fourth. He's got just a second or so over Dennis Marshall for the remaining share at sport car. Rest of the top 10, Rover Racing with Sheldon von der Linde, Fricatelli Racing Team in the top 10 again with their Ferrari. The Shell Helix car, the number 72, Charles Vetz, getting some precious laps in. He's the least experienced of those teams. That was the plan from them, told us that this morning. And that BMW, then two of the GT3s, Tim Bilstein, number four, and Gilles Goudon. That's Maxi Goethe, by the way, Gilles Goudon in the Get Speed car. I cannot imagine Mercedes are going to be happy this weekend. None of the Mercedes teams have been up at the top. Uh, Jordan Pepper mix up uh, is 11th for Lamborghini, then three more Mercedes for Bilstein, then the two more get speed cars. 15th Dynamic Porsche, 16th Herbert Porsche. They're flat to deceive a little bit, that Herbert Porsche. The number five led the race, but uh, didn't go their way in the middle. Falcon Horst were up with the sharp end for a while. Kuba came as back in that car in 17th. The Aston Martin team Advan in 18th for their Mercedes. Frank Mayer in 19th, the leading SPX car. And the Conrad Motorsport Lamborghini has rejoined in 20th position. Still keeping our eye on the Cup 2 battle. It's still K. Kramer by two seconds from Mulder Motorsport. And then 13 seconds further back, another pair of cars, Avia and Black Falcon disputing the third spot on the podium. Well, it was a stellar opening stint, wasn't it, from uh, Dennis Olsen? Of, uh, you know, yes. Gra grabbing the lead purely on merit and talent, uh, and then having it, you know, it ebbed and flowed a bit, and it lost it again and got it back again, and it was it was proper proper racing. So, as you say, flatter to deceive is it really does sum it up because it, I just thought it would be I'd just be there or thereabouts at the end, and it's it's just not, which is surprising. Picariello is going to put the fastest lap of the race in. He needs to do an 8.14, and he's going to do that, I reckon. He's in sector eight at the moment, so he's on his way back. And he's got a nice draft ahead of him because he has caught the Rover Racing of Max Martin and the leader. So that's incredible. He has, has absolutely stormed through. Ragging is only two seconds up the road. They're into the last chicane. And if anything, he's been slightly held up by the BMW here. But watch the lap time for the number 33. Top three cars on the start finish line together. And here comes the pass to the right hand side as Picariello goes through. Oh no, that was an outlap. It was an outlap, but even on an outlap, it was only 10.22, and that included his pit stop. But he's put three of the fastest sectors of the race in. I'd forgotten he'd just come out the pits. First, second, and third absolutely together. 23 minutes to go. And I think we're going to go on to lap 28 here. This is going to be very, very tight indeed. This will be... We're on lap 25. I think we'll go to lap 28. Now, who does that mean that they are struggling I don't think it's a problem because everybody stopped quite late three yeah it's only going to be six lap stints at the end here uh, it'll be a seven lap stint for Martial and van der Linde in the 15 share sport and Rover Racing uh, oh now will it because they haven't completed that lap yet, have they? No. Well, that's going to be an eight lap stint for them. So they should, even at that, they still should be okay. Well, the Porsche coming strong down the pit, uh, pit straight there. Maxime Martin, though, just, just blending across and just, just didn't shut the door, just, just 
gently put a foot against it and just pushed it too casually to say, well, it's up to you. It's a, it's it's reducing. You, you make a, you make a decision, and exactly like you said yesterday, John, it's, you know, it's a gap that's diminishing. So there's no point. But uh, then got a bit racy. What I have noticed is that BMW down at the the bottom part of the the GP circuit, but down at the very very bottom, it's a, it's very slow mid corner there. And I've noticed it just doesn't. Does it, we tried it around the outside. We saw it and it ran wide because it lost lost a bit of mid corner there. And it just doesn't have it. And it just doesn't. This, this BMW just doesn't seem quite as agile this weekend as these Porsches have. I also think that they are um, that that BMW now is defending second place rather than trying to attack three seconds up the road for first. And that's just slightly changing the driving style of Max Martin because ragging it without putting in any stellar times. He's not hanging it. He's not, you know, um, stopping and having a cup of tea, mind you. But he's not putting any stellar times and he's, he's eating out the gap. He's, he's moving it out on the second and third place car. Now, they need to be a bit careful here, Rover Racing, because you've got a charging Chan Guven who's right at the start of his stint. Uh, so on new tyres, and he won't, have, he won't have a full fuel load. So he won't need to, to have had as much fuel in that car as the cars ahead of him. You can see the same for um, Picariello as well. So they're going to have to be a bit careful. It's 11 seconds at the moment, but he's taking... He's taking two and a half seconds out of them in the first part of the lap. So... You can hear the Porsche sort of lifting off rather than braking. He's very close to the back of the Rover BMW. Now Martin's picked his pace up just a little bit and in that short fourth sector, he's taking time out of the leader. The top four are separated by only about... Uh, 12 seconds then it's another 8 seconds back to von der Linde in the Rover racing BMW and we've got 19 minutes so as we get back around here we're going to have about 11 or 12 minutes aren't we I reckon that's, I reckon that's more than one lap don't you yeah two laps <laughs> yeah yeah So two laps to go at the end of this one. We are on lap 25. So no, we can. We'll be at 27. So we will be at 27. Hans Peter Nandorf, who is the team boss at Rover Racing, said we hope we can take home at least second place or a podium. It would make amends for yesterday. The team worked hard overnight. We have gained some insights. We can be satisfied. Daniel Kovitz about his Ferrari. The car's just quietly got about it. No muss, no fuss there. Says the car's been running great. Sometimes you just have a stint and you hit traffic in the workplace. That's how it was for me. The car can go faster. Sometimes you're lucky, sometimes you're unlucky. But I didn't want to take any risks. Well, oh, contact there. For oh, Pic my goodness, Pic Carrello, contact. Yeah, that was at uh, uh, Kesselschen. Uh, sorry, Clotetel going up to... I was just watching that, and it's. Uh, I think that might have... I think it's taken him out. That's going to take him out of the race. It's uh, left front. Yeah, left, left front. front he, just, he, just, he just clipped a golf. They, they were just that fast, fast bit of Kessel There was a yellow Clotten flag golf. there as well. There was, there was a well, yellow flag there for a car at the left hand side of the road, Peter. And he's clipped one of the golfs uh, quite quite hard. And I think, I think he's the done damage moved, to his left front. Yeah, the golf moved to miss that car on the left hand side. Correct. Yeah, and it just, but, it just tagged the, the BMW. Yeah, lost got the position. grello has gone through yeah. the third. Chan Guven. So for the second time, one of the Falcon cars, second time in two days. Same car. Watch watch for the same car. The Golf indicates to the right, then has to take the racing line. But look, there's a car on yeah. the inside there. There was definitely a car on the inside as they were coming up to the, just through the mud curve uh, and through to the bottom of the run to, through Klostertal actually and there was yeah. a yellow there 
No. I, f I feel I feel for both parties there because the Me too. as we said earlier, you know, as as you know, cars can't disappear. That car is on the left. The golf's got to miss it. He's can't he can't just go up the back of it. So he's got to be somewhere on the track. And if there was a yellow, which you've spotted, John, then then in fact here it is once again. So the BMW gets through. And the golf has he does he put hazards on there? Just, just bright lights. Oh, is he right indicated to say I'm going that yellow flag, yellow flag on the yeah. left hand side before that. So there should be no overtaking at this point. Yeah. There's no green flag yet, and I think it's one of the Avia cars on the inside. Uh, that that I'm afraid is an error of judgment. Yeah, um, I agree. For the Porsche driver, for Picariello, he was pushing hard. Uh, uh, but that is his mistake. There was definitely a yellow flag uh, before he tried to overtake that golf. Now, which golf was it? That's the question, because there's a couple of golfs from him well in their class. Uh, the Max Kreuzer racing car is leading the AT class. Was that the triple three? Uh, it's about the right sort of part of the circuit, if it was. Let's just, let's just see where that is on the track now, if it's slowed, because there's certainly some right rear damage to that, wasn't it? You say triple three, John? Triple, well, the, tri the triple three or the 80, both are, oh no, the, the, the 80. Right, yellow flag clearly displayed to driver's left before the right-hander. And he tries to dive up the inside. And as you say, Peter, the golf driver pulling across to give room on the inside for the stranded car. Picariello, I'm afraid, in the heat of battle, might have missed that. I've just as... misread it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ricardo... F oh, no, he's on. He came in the pits before. So has that car continued? Yes, it has. Uh, no, that's the 44 going through. Wow. Massive. So let me check all the golfs and see how they are going. Just doing the same. 800 still going fine. That's coming down the pit straight now and not, not going into the pit. That so was that's... fifth in TCR. So I'm just doing one on the tracker for us, John. I'm just doing that. So Naked. just going from the, the bottom up. It's 800 is fine. Max Kreuzer Racing is the number 10. Uh, that's third. They've got two cars um, in the AT class. 477 is still on track. That's the as best racing one. So that's just Rocco. My apologies. Oh, click on the wrong one. Um, triple three is at Bergwerk, so that's done another lap, so that's okay. And that's the leader in the AT class. That was my slight worry uh, there. Well, there we are just when we thought we were going to get the grandstand finish. Um, should mention that Charles Vertz, the uh, young Belgian driver, looking to get extra time in that car this weekend for the BMW. Uh, and he's just put that car's fastest lap of the racing into the pit lane. Tens in the for... box, Max Cruz, that's the one. Is it? That's, is it? That's box, Max Cruz, it's in the pits now. And a damaged Porsche from Fulton in the pit lane. It's lost the left front wing. Uh, it's, it is a bolt-on, bolt-off part, that, on these new GT3 cars. Um, uh, yeah, that's it. It is the 10. It's just the 10. That's awkward, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I, I, let's say it again. I don't think they were third in the AT class and they won't lose a class position. He did very well to make that to make sure that that car didn't spear right into the into the guardrail. Well, they're sending the golf out again. They're patching it up. You can't tell on the underbody work on that though. It's got that uh, uh, point. that lift. Where you can't really tell if it's got gaffer tape on or not. To be honest, it's another random pattern on it. But it's going back out again. A little bit damaged to the fences on the. On the diffuser on there, I notice, as it has left the pit lane. But it's uh, she's got 12 minutes to complete. It's going to get well, it's, oh, lap, one lap. One lap for them. One lap, yeah. For uh, them. Well, maybe two. Maybe, maybe, maybe two. Yeah, Depends where the leader is. Another, yeah. And let's talk about our leader. Now on the 26th lap, halfway around. 12 minutes to go. So it will be one more lap at the end of this one, I reckon. 
Frank Mayer has just put the Glickenhaus' fastest lap of the race in. 8.21.4. As he's now in 18th position. Oh, starting to get a little bit chilly as well. Temperature <laughs> just starting to come down. But, um, Schnitzel will sort you out on that one. Yeah, or oh, Prospect Dog. Schnitzel. Now, the question, and a number of people have spotted this as well, um, given that yellow, did the BMW overtake under a yellow? The number 98 car, Max Martin, a stationary yellow going into Klostertal. I think and that's a, actually... I think he was ahead already, John. Right, it was tight. Yeah, I agree, but I think he was ahead already. Right. Uh, left front um, track rod, steering arm gone for the fault and Porsche as well as the bodywork damage as a result of the contact with that uh, AT fueled, alternatively fueled Golf, the Max Chrysler racing car, number 10. I wonder if he didn't see it because of the camouflage. Sorry, I'll get my coat. <laughs> Still three seconds at the head of the field. And then nine between second and third. Guven's not giving up, though. He's still pushing, still taking time out of the leaders. Just half a second out of the car ahead of him there. And a slow BMW in SP10, the number 191. Valkenhorst car. Maybe Valkenhorst have not had a good day. Uh, our, our good friend uh, Alan Prosser at uh, Prosser has once again done take some stills. If you can zoom in on and have a look at it, just put it onto uh, onto Twitter for us. And it does it does appear that the the BMW has got past the number ten Golf before the yellow flag is displayed. If That's got... a waved yellow. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the BMW, as you see it, has got through. I worked out what that car is. It was parked to the left. There's damage, though, because the rear hatch is gone on that car that was on the left. So the, the golf driver was absolutely right to give it a wide berth. Well, I can uh, tell you exactly what car it was. Lucky. Was 13, was it? <laughs> yeah, parked on the left-hand side there, not having anybody collected. Oh, uh, right, sorry, I, I think very yes. lucky, yes. I see what you mean. Um... I, I, I can't. I don't think you can blame the golf driver there at all. No. Um, and and it to. I think Picariello will will be spoken to about that. But in his defence, he's looking to the right there, to the apex of the right hander, and although he's sitting on the left hand side of the car, but he's looking to the right work out where that golf's going and the Martian support is on the left hand side there. That's, I think that's the stationary the car. The sorry John, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. So I think the stationary car was 191. Oh right. Uh, yeah, that is the Val that's another Valken Holmes yeah. car, isn't it? Yeah. BMW. Uh, well, that car's back in the pits now, so so they've must have picked that up. Um, if that was the case. Um, we'll find out in a moment. Um, Manuel Metzger talking about the 150 BMW, probably fourth place. Uh, they lost four minutes with that puncture at the end of the first lap. He says you just can't make up four minutes nowadays, so it's probably going to be fourth. So that'll be off the podium for the first time this NLS season for the 150 car. Where is the leader? Answer on the Donegal Hurt. And this will be the last lap as he comes round this time. Sorry, he will start the last lap as he comes round this time. So we will once again have 27 minutes. 27 minutes, 27 laps completed. And all of a sudden he's got a five second lead. Called 60 now at Callan Hard exit. 
So has somebody had a whoopsie dropping down there as well. I reckon this is the start, the last lap then for the Martin Ragiger driven Falkman Motorsport. Is this going to be the Falcon double? Twenty-five point three seven eight kilometers to go. And the gap with the line four point six four point three seconds. Six and a half from Max Martin back to Chan Guven. There's still some battling going on though behind them. The Rover Racing BMW number 99 and Dennis Marshall right with that car. Also, the number four, Maxi Goats driven Mercedes, is looking at the back of a. Uh, now that's an Audi, so that isn't, I don't think, a battle for position. As the Fricatelli car pits on the last lap. How bizarre. Now, what's happened here? Just a splash of fuel. Well, it seems like they were expecting it. Have they got, have they not been able to count to eight? No, they were fine. That was only a four lap stint. That's uh, going in the box as well. I don't see any damage on that car. So um, what, I, yeah. hmm, what I would say was a good weekend for them. Let's, well, let's find out. Our pit reporters will be on that as quickly as possible. Nothing to choose between the... Oh, well. Nothing to choose between the top three cars at the last... Does that look planned? It does. Uh, I was just thinking that. Cause that's <laughs> Fernandez. Uh, that's not getting out, isn't he? Incredibly tall. Yeah. Uh, we'll tell him of uh, that. He's, uh, it, it just looked casual, didn't it? As in, as you say, planned. It's exactly the right word. Just back to the Calinard exit, uh, John. I think it's uh, actually just an intervention car, uh, number four, that's on, on the scene there. And I think it's obviously debris or something. There's no actual, okay. no competition car parked there, was, stationary there. It was indeed Philippe Fernandez, Liz, uh, Liz, uh, who got out of the car. Uh, he and Daniel Kailovitz jetted in yesterday from Barcelona and uh, we're a bit late on parade this morning. Somebody forgot to <laughs> book the alarm call. Uh, yes, indeed so. Raining monkfish, hello, buddy. Uh, endurance is amazing, isn't it? No matter how long the race, the last 30 minutes always changes everything. It does seem like that nowadays. Uh, it really does. Incredible stuff. Uh, we've got, well, the leader is on his last lap. So let's quickly do some class leaders. Um, retired because of noise, KTM number 55. In 108th place is the SP11, that was the only car in the class. Two cars in SP40 and the Golf has the, uh, the Golf, the Beetle RSR has the advantage at the moment over the Subaru, both cars with problems, drive shaft for the Beetle and contact, which caused the issue. They are, actually they are back on the same lap now, however. Um, so, in 104th and 105th position, but I, I think time is not on the side of the Subaru to close them back down again. Hoffer Racing in 93rd, the BMW M2 Racing Cup car uh, leads its class. Again, I think that was the only car in that class. 82nd is next, that's the V1 BMW 325i, the number 731. And V5 is just a few places ahead in 77th. That's a Porsche Cayman CM12. That's the modified Porsche Cayman. That had a bit of damage earlier on, the number 446, but leads its class anyway. The Team Mertens Motorsport car is in 72nd position. That's the Hyundai i30N 492, uh, leading its class. 
Uh, the Schmickler Performance SP 3T number 319 leads its class number in 71st position. And that is the Porsche Cayman 718. 718, excuse me. Uh, the V6 leaders are General Motorsport in their Porsche Cayman. The 396 car is 67th. The VT rear wheel drive, VT2 rear wheel drive, the number 500 BMW 330i, another Adrenaline Motorsport car. And just a couple of three places ahead is the 240i Adrenaline Motorsport Racing Cup car, the 650. Uh, next up, SP7 Plus Line Racing Porsche Club Sport. It's a GT4 Cayman, the number's 80, 59th position. Uh, AT, Max Kreuzer Racing in the Triple Three Golf. Mark 7. Uh, then we're in SP10, the Pro Sport Aston Martin, still ahead of the Toyota uh, tyres with Ring Racing Supra. So that's Pro Sport, the number 175 in 43rd position. SP18 is the Wusterhagen driven door Motorsport Aston Martin, actually well ahead of uh, Beitzkevisa in the GT Tire Motorsport BMW car and the door motorsport cars a further lap down in sp80 so it does look like fourth positioning class for the jimmy broadbent car uh cup two still that battle going on two seconds between gabriella di martino and the number 122 the hofmeyer driven uh Mulner racing car and that one is going to go all the way to the end there's been nothing to choose between those two all the way through this race uh, and in third place, it's still the Black Falcon car, the 148, which has got Tobias Müller on board that one. Uh, he's only got four seconds on the... Uh, so that's a change, actually, because the uh, Avia uh, WS Motorsport car was there before. So that's a, a, a move up for Black, Fal Black Falcon, and they'll be going to the end. The Avia's got the fastest lap in that race. Uh, then it's Frank Mayer for Glickenhaus and at the top, the SPX leader and Martin Rangingham, as we said, leads. Let's go through some quick... Uh, some quick quotes. The weekend's been very good for us in the number 911. We were able to collect a lot of kilometres and driving time and do training in traffic. We did some setup work as well, says Thomas Prining. Uh, the Ferrari, we've had a few problems. That had something to do with the collision at the bit. Maybe... We thought we'd rather park the car at the end. Um, Jimmy Broadbent, uh, no, that's uh, Manuel Metzger. We've done that one on there. So now it's just about the run to the line for Martin Ragging as time has now elapsed. So he's got to just keep it on the island. Uh, the gap between second and third is still coming down. Chan Guven has got it under seven seconds now. And in fact, he's just lost some time in the last sector. So let's see how it goes. But meantime, with yellow flags on the Dotty Gehur and another golf incident, actually, as the leader comes through. So there can be no overtaking. And that is the BMW right there. That is much closer than the four seconds. That's great. That's been really good news for Martin Raginger. We're back to green flag for the run to the line. That's not going to be anywhere near four seconds. So Max Martin had closed right into a couple of seconds behind the leader, but it will be a double on the Ravenel ADAC 24 hour qualifying weekend, eight hours of racing, two stop top step finishes for Falkman Motorsport. And the 44 car comes through. And at the end, the gap is under two seconds. A much better run for the BMWs of Raw Racing today. Uh, it will be Grello through in third position. No chance for them to catch back up again so two Porsches on the podium both days running subject to post race technical inspection of course it should be the Fondalinda Rover Racing BMW the 99 car through next yes it's gone through just ahead of Dennis Marshall two seconds the gap there for share of sport he's the best of the Audis in fifth still waiting for 
the BMW of Charles Vetz to come through. Put that car's fastest lap of the race in last time around. Good battle going on behind him, though, between the apt sports line, Jordan Pepper driven Lamborghini and Maxi Gertz right in front of him, behind him. It's Nick Grenier as well. These three come to the line, battling for seventh, eighth, and ninth position. The Bilstein car's going to get it, I think. Yes, it does. And those positions stay the same, but barely a second between all three of them. In fact, only eight tenths. Massive so, understeery moment for the Lamborghini on the last bit of tear guard there, just put the uh, the Mercedes in touch behind it. Quick thought on the Golf that you mentioned there, John. That was the number 10 car that was involved in the, in the 33 ah. Falcon engine. I just wonder if they'd pulled over to the right and slowed down for a minute to let the leaders come through so they so didn't have to take another complete another lap. Yeah. Repeat victory for Falcon Motorsports and their number 44 car. Class winners are coming through as well. Frank Mayer, of course, has won in the SPX category. Now, where are the Cup 2 runners? Have they been lapped again? So have they actually finished? Fricadelli finish in the pit lane. The eight, uh, the Hyundai 830 finishes in 35th position and wins the TCR class comfortably. I'm just looking to see where that Cup 2 class, I think they got lapped, so they, I think they're done. So that will have finished then. Di Martino for Kay Kramer ahead of Hofmeister and Muller for Black Falcon racing in third. So 1 2 1, 1 2 2, and 1 4 8 in Cup 2. Sorry, I didn't see them get passed by the leader. Uh, TCR, we've mentioned Cup 3. Avia still to come to the line, so we'll wait for that for a moment. And. What do you take away from this, Peter, this weekend? Well, it, it, it is. It's, Porsche seems to be the strongest car this weekend, manufacturer to have around here. And, uh, and it appears to be Falcon, yes and no. They seem to have it sort of a... It's like one child's done very well and one, one's, you know, one, one's just you know, been sent to the back of the class and put down a year, hasn't it, really? Um, so it makes I'll tell you what's interesting about the, 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 the Porsches is it doesn't matter what tyre they're on because those those cars on the podium are on different tyres. Yeah, yeah. Um, Falcon, for me, have played the strategy cards really well. They've clearly got a fast car. Um, Manta, you never count out. I think BMW will be much happier today than they were yesterday, particularly Rover Racing, who was second and fourth today. Shara had a good day yesterday and not a bad day today. Um, it's the Mercedes teams for me. I mean, seventh today is a big improvement on what we saw yesterday, but seventh and, you know, a minute back on the leaders in a four-hour race. Let's not mention Aston Martin. Uh, I didn't mention Aston Martin. No. Well, I thought, I thought, Falcon I, Horse, I on a in fairness, <laughs> in, in fairness um, the 34 Falcon Horse car got to the end uh, and finished in 14th position, two minutes away from the lead after a troubled weekend. Cuba Game Asiak getting up to speed in that car. But um, I, 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 we saw flashes of speed from the Huracan, uh, particularly the Jordan Pepper car. Should have won last weekend um didn't but finishes in the top 10. our leader is out of the car but this will be done in german so we'll just listen in so john just going back to our um request to go and see the clock of the course which i saw nothing further on does that nothing affect further. Uh, has that been no further action no i, I haven't seen anything about it either ah. way it, it, but it was the 44 car that's which my point is the winner yeah. of the race yeah it was the 11 and the 44 was that no right 11 no 11 schnitzel alm it was uh, yeah, I can't scroll back through. It's the 44 and then one of the BMWs, was it? When they were battling for the lead, 98 mm. maybe. Um, but certainly it was it was definitely the 44. So, I mean, Falcon will be delighted. They've worked so hard. Um, 
they aren't as big a tyre company as some of their competitors. Uh, they work very hard indeed in developing the cars, uh, the tyres for the cars. Uh, I remember when they came into the American Le Mans series, they ran two different cars. Actually, ran a Ford GT and a Porsche, and then decided to go with the, the Porsche for everything. And at least it's a known quantity, you see. Wasn't it one of the Shearer cars that was being investigated at the same time? Yeah, it was the 11. Uh, oh, yes, yeah, 16. Uh, it was definitely a, a, double, a double number, you're right, not a triple number. Yeah. Um, you're spot on. So if, 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 it was a, if it was a 16 car, it's kind of irrelevant, because the Ricardo fella retired that it's with out. the broken suspension yeah. anyway. But if it's the 15 car, that's in fifth place. A couple of more winners that have now come through. Uh, we've mentioned the Hyundai. The Cup 3 winners were Avia with their Porsche. The 169 car. The Cup uh, 3, as I said. Uh, AT was Dome Motorsport and their Aston Martin 169. SP10, the Pro Sport Ast Aston Martin Vantage. So in the other classes, Aston have done right, really rather well. Uh, then we go down to the AT class. Actually, only eight seconds between them in the end. Max Kreuzer uh, Racing took it in the triple three from the 227 Toyota of E-Fuel Team Greisemann. Uh, Nuffer uh, Plus Line Racing took SP7 with their uh, number 80 car, the BMW 650 Adrenaline Motorsport. They led all the way through uh, in the 240 class. V2 Rear Drive was the 330 from Adrenaline. That was their 500 class, the above comment. Uh, V6, Adrenaline Motorsport, Porsche Cayman S, the 396 car. Schmickler took SP3T, 319. Uh, S, uh, VT2 front, uh, Auto Thomas. Oh, no, that was, so that changed near the end. The Cupra Leon KL, uh, Auto Thomas by Young Motorsport, uh, the VT2 front wheel drive class, the 495. The... Number four, V4 class was the BMW 731. That was a 325i. Uh, Hoffer won in the Racing Cup class, the 885 car with their BMW. SP4T was the BM, uh, was the Beetle uh, ahead of the Subaru by, in the end, about two minutes, just over two minutes. The Door Motorsport crossbow was too loud. Uh, and bizarrely, when it didn't have any orange on it, um, no, the exhaust was too loud and they had to retire that car, but they are still scored as the winner in SP11? Yes, SP11. John, just very quickly, what's that parked at the end of the pit lane exit that looks front left wheels missing and looks heavily damaged front and back? Has that been hit going across the line? Yeah, that, that's almost, almost like it's, it's got roof damage. Uh, and, it, and it's steaming from the front. Correct. That car. Front left wheel's missing. T the, the split, the rear PU's hanging off. It's, uh, is it. Is it a golf? Was it a golf? Uh, it's not sure. Good spot, Peter. It's a double. Is that a double number on that car? Yeah. Um, at least, yes. seeing that on the main feed at the moment. Right, so there's a way to do this, isn't there? Start scrolling back. Uh, so it's not the Subaru. That was 88, and that's blue. So what is the... Oh, is there an odd car? Uh, I think it's 499. That's what it is. Is uh, it? It's on, the, it's on the GPS. It is... It's the uh, Kievan... It's the Hyundai. If it's 499, that's the Kievan Sports Racing. Uh, that the, Certainly 499 is stationary on the GPS. Well, that's had a heck of a bang. Well, it has. Yeah, that's my point. That's why I'm just slightly concerned at spotting that. Let me just go... I'll just click on it in... on the tracker. Um, yeah, that's definitely... Yeah, that's... Yes, it's a 499. Kevin Sports Racing Hyundai 130N. So Pascal, Fritscher or Thomas Schoenfeld. Uh, we're at the wheel. Yes, now we're just zooming in on that now. It's, um... Yeah, it is. It, well, it's, it's lost the left front wheel. It's steaming gently. The driver is still in the car. Um, it's also been dinged from behind. So has it So has it just run over its own? I was just going to say, is it no more than wheel? that? Yeah, thank goodness. It, thank goodness it looks like it hasn't been hit. Just the initial camera it looked like it had been some extra, extra damage that it wasn't. Uh, I, think, I think you're right, John. I think it's just run over its own wheel. 
driver staying in the car rather sensibly. Uh, here is the provisional results. Post race text till to come for the Ravenel ADAC 24 hours of the Nürburgring second race of qualifying weekend. It is Porsche to the fore again and a delightful double. They have repeated uh, Saturday and Sunday, Falkman Motorsports in the 44 car ahead of Rover Racing. Much better from them and their BMWs today. They'll be second and fourth. And, of course, Manti Racing, they have to be there. And they are second yesterday, uh, promoted to second yesterday, third today. Uh, then the second of the uh, Rover cars, I said. Share a sport with... Uh, third and fourth yesterday. They get a fifth today ahead of another BMW, the M Team RMG uh, in sixth position. Charles Vett's doing a grand job getting his laps in and putting the car's fastest lap in the race then there towards the end. Uh, then it was uh, the best of the Mercedes, which was the number 14 Bill Stein car. Jordan Pepper finished up for Abt Sportsline, pushing hard at the end, just ahead of the pink 130 from Team Get Speed and Shield Gunon in the top 10 made up by Phil Ellis and the second of the Get Speed cards. In fact, uh, Get Speed cards, 9th, 10th and 11th. Uh, picking out the other class winners there. The 7 or 6 inside the top 20 for the SPX champion uh, for the SPS class, should I say. And we've done the rest of the winners for you. So we'll just wait for the formalities to start a final word from you peter in terms of what we said oh and, and by the way i should say it it's four in a row for the number 650 so the team adrenaline uh, racing car with the uh, market uh Michitovic and goodman bmw driven car they are leading on their own now in the nls with maximum points after the problem that we had for the porsche early on when that car was uh, winning uh, and leading its class. So in the NLS, which resumes after we've had the Ravenol 24 hours in the Nürburgring, uh, those are leading, uh, that car is leading. So well done to them. That's the 650 crew. Next time we see these cars, Peter, and next time we're here at the Green Hell, uh, it will be for the race itself. And what are you expecting to see? More of the same. The winner is always the venue. Um, no matter who organises the events here, the circuit delivers something every, every time. And it's just absolutely brilliant. And all all we want to see is more more racing, not less, on the Nürburgring. So let, let's have just that. Peter Snowden has been alongside me in the Global Broadcast Centre. Thank you for joining us. For all of you uh, who have been with us, hello to Roxy. Uh, and to G, G talk to us right at the end, and Velonaid as well. Nice to listen to you. Enjoyed the broadcast today. We'll keep the hashtag going. Uh, RSL underscore 24 HN uh, 24 H uh, NBR and uh, at rsl underscore studio of course always the place to get to us when we are on our racing coverage quick reminder that it's a very busy weekend next weekend fia wec on saturday and sunday have that for you uh with fp3 qualifying and the race We've got IMSA on the streets of Long Beach with the big prototypes and all the GT cars. That is going to be interesting. That's just 100 minutes. And that, again, is Friday and Saturday. Check uh, imsaradio.com uh, for our coverage of that. We'll have that in sound and vision for you. And we've also got a 24H series racing as well. They are at Spa for a 12-hour 7 on Saturday, 5 on Sunday. Uh, if, uh, if memory serves uh, on that one. And that's all live and free before we come back here to the Nürburgring 
to start our extensive and extended coverage of the Ravenel ADAC 24 hours of the Nürburgring for 2024. We'll kick that off with a midweek motorsport live from the track and our broadcast positions uh, just to drive us left as they come back onto the start finish line by the BMW M Power Bridge. Right, to Patrick Simon now. Thanks for listening to Peter and I. Have a great rest of the weekend. We'll see you for more action next weekend and midweek motorsport on Wednesday. Uh, whatever you're doing, take care and don't drive like what you've just seen. Those guys are all professionals. Now for the formalities with Patrick. Platz 2 für das Hause BMW, besser gesagt für Mobile Racing, freuen wir uns auf Maxi Matter, auf Marco Wittmann und Raffaele Marcello, die Zweitplatzierten. Und ich glaube, die Headline dieses 24-Stunden-Qualifiers ist, Falken war am Ende nicht zu schlagen. Die Gesamtsieger des Sonntagsrennen heißen Nico Wenzel und Martin Reidinger für Falken Motorsport. Und zu Ehren der Gesamtsieger die Hymne der Bundesrepublik Deutschland. für das erfolgreiche Team von Falken Motorsport und wir freuen uns auf die Trophäen, die erfolgreichen Piloten. Die Forschungsvorsitzende vom ADAC Nordrhein, Frau Schmitz, einmal mehr eine Ehre, heute mit den Glastrophäen und wir starten mit Platz 3 für Manta Yema, die beiden Grenno-Piloten Thomas Breining und Daya Chan Güven, die Trophäe in Glas. Für die drei BMW-Piloten aus dem Hause Rube Racing ebenfalls den Pokal für den zweiten Platz im Gesamtklassement. Raffaele Marcello, Maxi Motta und Marco Wittmann. Wahrscheinlich, wenn man hier oben nicht umschaut, die begehrtesten Pokale da stehen, nämlich die 1 drauf. Die 1 für die Gesamtsieger des ADAC 24 Stunden Qualifiers. Und das sind Martin Raginger und Nico Menzel, die Laufsieger des Qualifier-Rennens Nummer 2. Und ihr dürft hier gerne noch mal zusammenrücken mit den Pokalen, damit wir das fotografisch noch mal festhalten. Herr Upitz, ich hoffe, der Film ist eingelegt. Und dann dürfen Sie gerne noch mal applaudieren für unser Podium zum zweiten Lauf der ADAC 24 Stunden Qualifiers. Mit zweimal Porsche, einmal BMW. Der Glückwunsch an Manta Yerba, an Rube Racing und an Falken Motorsport. And now, gentlemen and ladies, it's time for Champagne.
sondern wollen wir natürlich hier diese kleine Champagner-Sektdusche nutzen, um uns zu verabschieden. Bei Ihnen zu Hause und bei allen an der Strecke ja, für, glaube ich, eine gelungene Generalprobe auch aus unserer Sicht. Und dann sind wir jetzt schon heiß auf das, was kommen wird zum großen 24-Stunden-Rennmeldung. Alles klar bei dir? Ja, war mega cool. Vielen, vielen Dank auch an, an dich für deine Geduld. War ja auch meine Generalprobe quasi für das Rennen. Und verzeiht mir vielleicht ein paar Sprachfehler oder Fatz, das war das erste Mal für mich. Du machst das mit Aussehen locker wie der Wett. Wir sagen Danke und freuen uns auf euch, ja, wenn die gewöhne Hölle dann zweimal rund um die Uhr von uns belebt wird. Tschüss, bis bald. Nürburgring Nordschleife, die längste Rennstrecke der Welt. Eins der Top-Rennen, was man in seinem Leben einmal gefahren haben muss. Das 24-Stunden-Rennen ist für mich persönlich das härteste und auch schwierigste Rennen der Welt.
die größte Sportveranstaltung Deutschlands. Die Hütte ist brechend voll. Das wird eine ganz große Party. Die Ampel ist grün. Es geht los. Es geht rein in die grüne Hölle. Motorsport vom Allerfeinsten. Und ich glaube, der, der wird sich jetzt entwickeln. In jeder Phase des Rennens geht es um jede Sekunde, um jedes Detail. Und diese Bilder immer wieder faszinierend. Oder oh, verliert das Auto. Achtung, der nächste Einschlag. Mann, oh Mann, oh Mann, oh Mann. Lecco mio. Ich zuck da immer zusammen. Also ich habe der Motorsport schon alles erlebt. Aber das habe ich ja noch nie erlebt. Und hier, das sind die Bilder, auf die wir gewartet haben. Das ist der absolute Hammer. Also ganz im Ernst, die Fans auf der Nürburgring Nordschleife sind ganz, ganz, ganz besonders. Blutdruck, würde ich sagen, ne? aber ansonsten geht es mir gut. Was für ein Moment hier in der Boxengasse, alle liegen sich in den Armen, es wird gefeiert. Jeder, der bis jetzt rausgekommen ist, war begeistert und spricht davon, was er hier Tolles bislang erlebt.